Hello, everybody, and welcome to Save or Die Outcast. How are you all doing today? Let's go. Yeah, doing feeling fantastic, good. Fantastic, Neil. Yeah, are you all ready? We are. Yes, sir. But, I'm absolutely you know, not ready, but I'm just here, in case. That counts. Just in case any of the viewers were drinking a lot while they were watching the first episode, could someone give us yeah. a recap of what happened in the first episode? Oh, that'd be great. Potato Nick, why don't you take us recap? away. Ah, uh, there we go. Ah, okay. So, in the previous session, we discovered that a possible half wizard, half cleric, elf named Autumn, uh, had a quest. She needed some equipment for her laboratory, and so she called upon us, myself, and the frog, to venture towards her tower through the incredibly dangerous swamp alongside Grau, who's from far away, and the strange wizard called Arrakis who has a sort of mysterious past and doesn't trust people and doesn't like monsters apparently either because he called the Bullywug a cur. Was that right? You called him a cur? That sounds um, about right, yeah. Uh, so we got the quest from her. We made our way to town. We had an adventure where we uh, found some frogs. The frog immediately leapt out of the... Um, <laughs> he leapt out of the swamp and crit me and I argued for my own death <laughs> for a solid 10 minutes and everyone else was like, no. You're not taking the bigger dice. And I was like, give me the bigger dice. Um, <laughs> hit me harder, You eventually Neil. got it. <laughs> and I got it. And I rolled just high enough to die. I, or, well, get knocked out. Uh, although technically, I believe in 2E, you are supposed to die when you hit zero health. But we are playing 2 Neil, which is a customized, modified version of D&D 2E, which is less horrifying where you don't walk into a goblet and get crit and die at level one. Um, we managed to make our way towards the town. We did discover that there was a lady in the town and a couple of gnomes in the town who produced the alchemical equipment that Lady Autumn required. Uh, there was also a Lady Vera, who is the March, the Inquisitor, the Dominator? Inquisitor. What is it called? The Magistrate. Inquisitor? The Magistrate. The magistrate. Uh, she's the she's Magistrate the Dominator. Of... <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> when, when her and Renatas get back to the bedroom, she will be dominated. <laughs> we'll see. Um, <clears throat> Speaking of which, uh, I did manage to uh, roll a natural 20 charisma check on the extremely attractive 17 hotness uh, evil lady who basically wanted to obliterate me and turn me into a paste on the wall. Um, but somehow she managed to ro survive every single wisdom check that she made and was able to not kill me and somehow be charmed by me and my ferret. Uh, we had a bit of a conundrum because she really wanted the alchemical equipment that the gnome was making for us, but we needed to figure out a way to get through that. So I waltzed up to the town and with my charm and grace, I said to her, oh, hello, my lady. Oh, you're looking for some equipment. Oh, let me just pop in there and see if I can find it from our order. Just give me your gold and I'll pop right back out and fulfill your order. Rolled a nat 20 on the finding the correct equipment on her list, then rolled a nat 20 to charisma checker. And then she started figuring out, trying to figure out who we were. Grau also came along with me and started a brief but chaotic romance with a small gnome girl <laughs> um, who... I think this might have been her first love and he may have spoiled the idea of romance entirely and I fully expect her to retire to the woods with 17 cats. Um, and then we made our way to leave the town. We hung out in the tavern for a little while and I think that was where we left off. So I do believe so. We yes. have a cart full of alchemical equipment that we basically need to take from Valebrook, is that right, Neil? Mm -hmm. To back to the tower at the edge of the swamp known as the moor which is where autumn lives that is correct <clears throat> so are we <clears throat> are we in a tavern at the end of the day so grouse just returned from his romance in the woods with the gnome um you know yeah. Rentus is back from flirting with the magistrate what mm -hmm. form did i assume when i went back into town i believe you were in gnome form right because the I sun gnome, was... gnome form mm -hmm. yeah yep uh so in the tavern we are you've talked with the gnome it went all right they sort of understand you head back you find the rest of your friends in a tavern not too far away you can tell because the cart with all the alchemical stuff is piled outside um you know in the little spot where you spot where you park your wagon and uh, you can wander on in and your friends will wave you on over. And soon the four of you find yourself sitting together in this tavern, not too far from the gnome's little domicile. So uh, it goes without saying that- Wait, I'm um, not in the town though, right? I think Garp Except stayed for you. outside, right? Yeah. Except for Garp. Yeah, so I'm outside. Okay. 
Oh, so it's coffee. just me and Renatus. So and it goes now, without saying that well, I am yeah. obviously sat in a shadowy corner of this tavern, looking menacing. My mm. Chris at mm -hmm. my side, um, you know, my my backpack sort of lean just to the back of my chair. My spellbook's in there, nice and safe. I try and stay out of the limelight as much as possible. And in doing so, it means that, you know, I go in, I buy myself a drink and I sit back down and I hope for table service because I actually can't bring myself to walk out into the open with all these people here. So mm. seeing Growl come into the tavern, I, I feel quite pleased because I'm presuming he's going to come over here and I can get him to go to the bar and get me a drink. Have you seen me in my gnome form yet? I don't think so, because I think I stayed away from the gnomes building. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So if you think... would see a gnome then who walks in, who looks sort of familiar. He kind of looks like Growl the human, but like he's a gnome. There's, there's similar facial features. You wouldn't necessarily think that it is Growl in a different form, but you might be like, you know, that gnome looks super familiar to me. Kind of like if you, you run into a random person, you're like, God, I, do, have I met this person before? And then later you're like, oh, no, they look exactly like my great aunt Hilda. Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a wizard. I'm learned. I know about druids. I've seen this guy turned into a bear already. So I'm aware he's a, a shapeshifter. So uh, I don't think I call out to him just because, you know, I'm trying to stay low profile. But uh, I'll give him a little nod if he looks over in my direction. Um, yeah, Grau will enter the bar. <clears throat> Hold on, I have to modulate twice for this. <clears throat> hello, everyone. Yes, hello. I'm Grau. <laughs> hello from Fao. Yes, he will like walk up to everyone and kind of introduce himself and be be nice to everyone. Make a round through the bar. Uh, what's is are people like reacting to this Koibu? Well, let me go open my saber die dice and make some rolls. Saber die die GG. Nice. All right. Uh, yeah, so you walk in, you start introducing yourselves to people, being like, hi, I'm Growl, and then you're moving on. And you get this, like, string of confused looks where people are like, this person was introducing themselves, and they are they someone that I should be aware of? Like, who walks into a tavern and just says hello to literally everybody? Either someone very friendly, someone very important, or someone a little touched, and we're not sure what it is. And the rest of you, the other two of you, you can see the the flow of faces as he walks through yeah. and everyone is like observing. So I give uh, Renatus a little elbow and I say to him, you should go and get Grau. He's calling too much attention. My character sheet, if I have any, I think I gave all of my gold to, I, I think I'm safe to assume I've spent all of my gold. Um, I don't think I have any left. I think you spent it all on like pies. Oh yeah. Me pies. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <clears throat> he's going to recognize you guys. Um, Oh, um, uh, uh, oh, Arrakis, yes, hello, hello, it's, it's me, Gra um, Hey, Grau, hey, Grau. Gra Grau, yes, yes, that's, that's, that's me, you remember me, what, nothing weird, or, ab about me, or this, it's, yes. It's all right, he, yeah, 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 you're, all, you're, all, you're all good. Uh, Renatus, why don't you go and get us a drink? Oh, yes, a drink would be, and uh. with, with, with the drinks, we, we get the food, right? Yes, the, we, oh, I'm so, oh, very hungry for my travels from far away, can we... Get some food. I, I will get you a drink, little man. Why don't you hop up on this stool, and I'll I'll pop off the stool that I'm on, and I'll give Growl like a hand to get up onto the stool if he takes it. Um, How much are drinks, Neil? We'll take it. Drinks are going to be five copper in this establishment per round. Well, per off. person's drink. I will. I will buy. Uh, wait, is um is Garp here? I'm nope. No, he's outside. He's outside, okay. I will buy three drinks and ask for a thimble of alcohol for, for the beautiful little ferret. Uh, sure, that'll be 17 copper. Oh, he charged me two for a thimble? I ask him for an empty tiny glass. I ask him for an empty shot glass. They'll and hand I, you an empty shot glass. And I pour a bit of my own beer in. I'm $2 for a shot glass of beer. This mother... Jesus Christ. Um, so then I... Um, yeah, I pour a little bit out for the ferret, and uh, this is a trick that we have prepared, and the ferret will pick up the drink, uh, and like, you know, like if someone were to like drink like a big old bucket of food, like, and it would like run down the front, the ferret will like drink it, and it runs down the front. It's not really drinking mm -hmm. it, it's just a trick, and then it'll like, and then I'll signal it to pretend to be tipsy, and it'll like fall around the bar. Is anyone mm -hmm. entertained by this? <clears throat> Give us a ferret performance check. A ferret performance check. <laughs> 
Uh, so first off, you're doing this over at the bar, and it's a pretty crowded area. Um, crowded enough that the people next to you cannot help but see, but the people just outside of that cannot see at all. So the ferret will do this thing at the bar, and the people to your left and your right, and the bartender, maybe the people standing right behind you who are trying to get forward to get a drink, will will see the ferret do this. And there's a little bit of chuckling. There's a little bit of like, oh, look at the cute things gone a, doing a prank. And then you see the bartender, and you see this like this angry look on his face. And you recognize this look. You, you've, you've come to this before. There's some people in this world who feel it's for some <laughs> bullshit reason. For some <laughs> absolutely ludicrous nonsense. They think having a rodent in a place where you eat and drink is a bad idea. And they, you can see the bartender, you can see the hand like move to like a mug nearby. And you can see like the, the knuckles go white as he grips the handle. Uh-oh. Uh, I would like to clarify that ferrets are a not rodents. <clears throat> First of all, um, they are a type. I think it's, I think they're called muscolids. What mm. are ferrets? I'm double checking this live right now. Yeah, you. I really Must think the bartender day. understands the nuances between rodents and ferrets, and this will he change. He starts explaining the difference. I just like to call out that I, I, I read so many Wikipedia articles about bears. I watched documentaries and everything in preparation <laughs> for this campaign. He doesn't even know what kind of animal a ferret is. Unbelievable. Um, anyway, so uh, do I, I, I obviously noticed this. And I realize oh, yeah. that I maybe have overstepped the boundaries and I will recall the ferret into my pack, give her a little ferret treat, uh, the smell of which will waft towards Grau. Mm, nice. Of course. Yes, Grau. You, Grau you, you smell ferret treats. Okay. And you also smell the other food that's being served around here. Suckling sausages. Mm. Yeah, the the, the food that's chicken. being served piques mm. my interest a lot more than the ferret treats that I've that I've because like I've been with the ferret treats on the on these travels, right? I've I've been able to smell them the entire time. I'm a fucking bear. I smell everything, and honestly, okay. I I've been kind of of the opinion that you're feeding this ferret a little bit of crap. So, um, bro, <laughs> I love Allison. I'm just I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot better better things to eat for for a boy around here. So um, she, he's gonna like every time they're like carrying out sausages and 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 other kinds of food. He, Grau is like, he's he's basically like cartoon following the smell lines <laughs> along. You know, he's just mm -hmm. he's in awe of all of this, and he's he's he he needs to eat. Wait, was the ferret called Allison? Yes. Okay. Um, so no, no, give, Abigail. Oh, Abigail. Oh, Abigail. 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 Another I give the egg. ferret. I give the ferret a treat and put it back in its comfy little sack that it lives in. And uh, I put it away, having realized that the bartender does not like that. But I will mm -hmm. uh, give him a little wink, like a cheeky little wink and a cheeky little smile. Like, how's it going, buddy? And then I will go back to nursing mm. my drink quietly. And I'll turn to engage Arrakis in some light conversation. We won't talk about anything important. I'll just ask him some, like, what do you think of the tavern sort of questions? Nothing plot important. Okay. Yeah, you guys can manage a, a little bit of a conversation, and a lot of you will hang out and sip your drinks. If you want to buy some food, someone's going to have to start shelling out silver pieces. Um, and then the question's going to arise. And the question that comes up is uh, Are we going to stay in this tavern overnight, or are we going to head off? Because Garp isn't here. And the city's pretty safe. You know, it's controlled by the Empire, which means law and order is definitely instituted. Um, and your your precious cargo is sitting out back. Um, it's in the city streets. Yeah, it's not and safe. And it's glass. Um, I mean, I don't even know how we agreed to this. This seems like a terrible idea. Um, but there's no way to get it all inside the tavern, right? No, it would be a ridiculous process to try and <clears throat> haul glass off of the cart and in through a crowded tavern into a room and then haul it back down like you could do it but it's going to take multiple hours yeah um, it'd be a mess so i, now I think the... we were meeting in the tavern to just reconvene the party right well it's or like, like the... is it not evening now or is it still daytime it's probably like late evening but not like eh, it's, i think it's like mid-afternoon you know like a we've got to um, we've got to spend a night on the road more than one night on the road to get back to the tower anyway right yeah, it's like a four-day journey if you don't yeah. stop in towns along so the way. So I think when Renatus comes back with the drinks, I'll say, "All right, let's uh, let's drink these and 
get some food for, for Grau here, but we should probably make a move. I mean, I don't feel comfortable leaving all the glass out there. In fact, I might go and watch it. When you guys just get something to eat and then meet me out there in an hour or so, and we should get going. I agree. Not even an hour. We'll 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 grab a couple of sausages and go. And well, tell uh, it to grow. I, he looks pretty hungry. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll shell out. How much is it for a single meal for a single person? Uh, two silver. I uh, I, will I down my drink and leave. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll shell out the two silver and I'll shell out twenty dollars for a fucking uh, meal, Neil. You know, it's a tourist you're trap. You're in the city. Mate. You're in the city, the drinks are five bucks, twenty bucks for a for a growl meal to feed growl? Mm-hmm. Come on. Gnome growl. You, yeah. What do you think this is? Toronto sushi? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, you should have seen the sandwich I got for twenty Canadian dollars in Toronto airport. That was I don't know. Daylight like robbery. Daylight like <laughs> robbery. So oh bad. My God. It's a piece of buttered toast. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, they tried to charge fifteen dollars for a bagel with cream cheese, and not even Good. just like a piece of thing in a plastic. It was mm -hmm. bad. You guys are going to the wrong places. True. At the, the airport? airport? What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, you should have gone to the airport with the gourmet food. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the Tim Hortons wasn't bad in the airport. Oh, mate. I'll say that. Same. Tim, actually. Is Tim Hortons was alright. Okay, I grab my backpack, Neil, and I uh, I go mm -hmm. out of the tavern, happy to leave the mm -hmm. noise behind and into the cold night air. Or evening, uh, is the are the streets busy right now? Yeah, it's mid afternoon, so it's still pretty busy. How people close, are still doing ordinary business? How close is our cart to the flow of traffic around the streets and in and out of the tavern? Uh, like ten feet. It's you got like the road that everyone's walking down. You've got buildings on the sides, and there's like a little recessed area where there's some stables and some areas to like pull up carts. And so these things are pulled off the road and like into a little docking station. Um, which if you're going to be here for more than just a couple of drinks, you're going to end up having to pay for, especially if you're staying overnight. But if you're like just popping in for some drinks, you can like leave your cart here for a minute. Yeah, um, okay. And it seems like a safe place. Like this is the, the sort of thing, mm -hmm. like it's a park in your car in, in a, in the parking lot. It's, uh, there's not really reason to be concerned unless you think someone is out to get your stuff specifically. Well, yeah, but it's all glass. Like it doesn't need a malicious intent to be destroyed. So I will, or even just drunk. light fingers. Yeah, I, I find myself a little place to sit near the cart so that I can see it clearly, and I'm also close enough to intervene if someone were to, you know, like someone drunk would start stumbling in that direction. Mm hmm. I just wait. All right, you can Back wait out in the streets. Tavern, I presume. I will you know, fairly quickly sip my drink, and I'll I'll chat to Grau, and I'll be like, Grau, uh, I'll grab you a meal, and I order from the bar. Whoever, whoever takes the other, and I'll order just uh, like a like a plate of sausages. And like, if I can be like, oh, there's there's potatoes in this meal. Can I replace like the potatoes with an extra sausage and just like just get a massive plate of sausages? You can just order sausages if you want. Sausage plate, nice. Yeah, I just I get it. I buy as many sausages as two silver can get me, and uh, slowly sip my beer while I wait for the food. All right, they will bring them out in maybe twenty eight minutes because it takes a little Jesus. while to cook a sausage just right. Um, and they're this fat, you know, they're fat links. You got to make sure that they're not pink in the middle. The, the I, FDA yeah. is going to get down on you for this. I take a sausage and I bite it. I want like a quality check. How good is this sausage? Because I just waited 28 minutes for a fucking sausage. <laughs> so that's the time that it takes to cook a sausage from, from raw. Absolutely not. Yeah, I you don't cook want sausages, sausages this guy's cooking. Yeah. I mean, if you're <laughs> cooking them on a skillet and they're a fat sausage, they take a while. You're, what what you, are your sausages have. coming have... out like like charcoal? Are you eating charcoal? No, I know, you know 28 minute sausages now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 28... Okay, do you guys have those like little tiny finger, you know, what they call British breakfast sausages? I can't believe there's an American yeah, yeah. right now talking do... to me about sausages. Neil, you cannot size sausage shame me, okay? We have perfectly normal sized sausages. I've seen in your this sausage. <laughs> we There's have James perfectly Holmes. normal sized sausages <laughs> in this country, okay? It's not okay for you to say that. We also have big puddings, all that sort of stuff. No, okay. Uh, I eat the sausage. How tasty? <laughs> Give me like a taste check. How good is the sausage? Mm. You need a grub check. What's your grub yeah. skill? Did you roll it? Uh, my grub is. I forget, actually. Uh, it's juicy. It's well, it's perfect. You know, the outside is just a little bit, it's not crispy, but it's like browned on the outside. And the inside maintains like a nice juicy, uh, so the like skin it snap flows when down I bite your it, throat. Like a... Ooh. Ooh. Like, um, 
Like you know when you know when you bite a sausage, you got that crunch. Like that the, the it needs the, the it needs the bite. Yeah, you bite the sausage. sausage. He's never eaten a good sausage back, in his life. This guy. <laughs> the sausage. I'm needs trying to, bite to think back. of the right word. Um, the thing with the this snap. sausage is that it's got a little bit of bacon and apple in it. So oh, when you go into bite it, you find like a little soft piece of apple, and then like the whole thing pops off, and like a little piece of already cooked bacon inside like cracks as the sausage breaks. <laughs> Right, okay, so I think I might need to put some that sausages on on the break now. <laughs> yeah, Gra well, Grau, as he's devouring these sausages and he's noticing that his little gnome body does in fact quit. Um, he's noticing he's filled up. He's all the way, but he has more sausages to go. He's going to excuse himself as he's learned to do. Yes, I will, I will be right back. He will say, please excuse me. He will say, looking around, and then stumble into the bathroom. Um, and then maybe you'll hear some rumbling from the bathroom. And out of the bathroom will step an orc. Who <laughs> 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 looks suspiciously like Grau. Who looks very much uh -huh. like Grau. Are there orcs so loud? Like, yeah. Are they, I th <laughs> are they cool in this city? We're about to find out. Uh, yeah. You, the half orc, is it? Or full orc? It's a full on remember. orc. Yep. Have Steps on off. out of the outhouse, comes like right across the little walkway, <clears throat> back in through the back door of the bar. Okay, wait. Hold um, on. We need to figure out if Grau would do this. Because he's not <laughs> been to the city, but he's been to the town that we were before this. We've established mm -hmm. that. Yeah. In yeah. that town, would orcs have been allowed? Totally. There's tons of orcs okay. around. They are one yeah. of the backbones of the, the army of Rossi. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Or the, the or he steps out in orc form. Yep. Yeah, uh, you walk in, you get a couple of looks and like some people shuffling away from you. Mm -hmm. um, but no one says anything. No one really does any. It's not problematic. Orcs yep. are known for their uh, slight violent tendencies. Oh yeah. They are tending to be like the the backbone of the the elite soldiers in the army, and so they're a little bit rough and tumble, and they're used to kind of getting their way and people not giving them shit, and so people just naturally move out of the way. Yeah, so, yeah, he will come back and work for him, sit down, he's going to start shoveling more sausages into his now increased belly. Nice. I wish I could do that sometimes. Yeah. That sounds like an amazing talent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, like shape-shifting, right. but only your stomach. So you can be like, ah, oh, I'm mm. a little bit hungry, just make it smaller so you can get through the day. But then there's like a huge Oreo cake in front of you, and then you're like... <sighs> yeah, well, you know what? Let me is... just undo the belt. Let the belly yep. flow and just start mm. pounding yeah. that cake, dude. Ah, yeah. Base. Grau's issue is his hunger God remains damn. that of a bear, no matter what form he is in. So even this orc form, not quite gonna fill him up, but he's gonna go in on these sausages. All right, cool. We're eating. We sausages. gotta stop doing this campaign that's so food based. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <this> is... <clears throat> so my character is sat outside, like, what the fuck is taking them so? Long? <laughs> we thirty made, minutes uh, later. We finish up really the food much. and. I steal a sausage, uh, and we and we make our way outside to the cart right. and the awaiting Arrakis wizard. I see an orc come out of the tavern and instinctively get to my feet, only to realize that it's Grau, um, and I settle back down. Hello, Arrakis. Ah. Hello. Yes. No, I, it's I jokingly it's okay. say, it's me. Yeah, Hi, yeah, you scared me. This that. is Grau. He's from far away. From, I from, can tell from far away. Yes, yes. It's it's me. Yes. Hello. All right. Well, since you're looking so strong there, uh, Grau, you can pull a cart. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Gladly, yes. And he'll, he'll do it. He'll, he'll get the cart. All right. Let's uh, make a move. Renatish, you can talk to them at the gate since uh, you're all lovey dovey with the magistrates, I hear. Well, that is if she hasn't said I'm not allowed to leave the city. <laughs> she might be trying <laughs> to find me. Perhaps. For a, for a night of passion, who knows? Well, uh, no, let's, make our escape before she, let's make our escape before she gets that claws into you. Oh, like for a date, you mean? Like you explain the date, right? Gab told yeah. me about the, you go on the date together and then sometimes you go to bedroom and you mate, mate date. Um, yes. Uh, Did you do? With, do I, with, do with, I know? Do I know about Grau's date with the gnome? Didn't you? Was I? Who him? talked to Grau about the birds and the bees? It was okay, Garp. It was you. It was Garp. Yeah. Garp, okay. uh, then no, I don't think you know much. Wait, okay. Didn't you was... set them up on the date? I think because I was going to. Think... I, I was going to jokingly together. say, no, Grau, a date is when you take a girl into the forest and then turn into a bear. <laughs> but I, I can't no, say that because I don't know about it. Yeah. Um, uh, so I will say, uh, 
Do, Grau, I'm a free he, agent. I'm not looking to date right now. I just Gra like Grau to... will say this very loudly in like the town square. So did you mate with the magistrates then? <laughs> I, uh, Grau, Do shush. People... <laughs> I will say, no, Grau, we just did a trade deal. Um, oh. oh, okay. <laughs> did that even hear him say that really loudly? Uh, yes, people did hear him say that loudly. 100%. Do I get strange looks? I have my ferret on my shoulder. Um, Not really. <laughs> You know, you, you see a couple of guys walking down the street and someone's like, did you mate with the magistrate? And, you know, no, who's going to take that seriously? Yeah, I was going right? to say, if it wasn't so ridiculous, we might be in some trouble here. I'm offended. Right, right. Just... I'm offended that people don't think I'm able to do it. Well, <laughs> maybe it's because the half or the, the orc is yelling it at you. You know, maybe it's because you're he's pulling a cart while he's doing it. Who knows? But no one seems to be taking the accusation seriously. I hurried the pair along quicker through the streets towards the gate. Mm -hmm. I am not comfortable now, with all the attention we're drawing here. Um, and Grau will be just... very interested in trade deal and what that is, and we'll have Renatus explain the intricacies of that to him. Yeah, I'll explain the trade deal whereupon she had a thing that she needed, and she also had the ability to, to inflict violence upon us, and there was a kind of implicit part of the trade deal where I did give her exactly what she wanted so that her infliction of violence upon me was not necessary. Um... And that sometimes in a trade deal, there are things on the table that aren't explicitly being negotiated, but you have to be able to see that they are. What does Grau roll to see how much of this he learns? Give me an intelligence check, Grau. Oh, 25. nailed it. Wow. Oh, All right, yeah. so Not most of that, you yeah. will acquire some of these this information. And there's yeah. a lot of complicated topics, you know, and I don't know how much <laughs> is going to stick in the long term, but for yeah. the moment, there's clarity. Uh, Renatus Fur, I need you Hello. to break me a charisma check, please. Absolutely. Boom. Oh, All right. nailed it cool. by failing it. Oof, failed. All righty. Just a reminder about and second edition. Uh, we roll our modifiers plus the raw dice, and you're usually looking for a 21, kind of like blackjack. Yes. yes, 21 or higher instead of 21 or just below. So to clarify, though, not, not your modifiers, your actual stat roll. Sorry, so your actual stat. Yeah. Renatus has yeah, yeah. 8 charisma, so he rolled d20 plus 8 and needed a 21. Yep, but I'm playing like I've got 18 charisma. Yeah. True. <laughs> it's the curse of the rogue, um, I'm afraid. Right. And can I get Garp to roll me a perception check? 18. Awesome. The party meets up outside the gate. You have absolutely no trouble getting out whatsoever. There are guards posted. They they check people coming in. They check people coming out. But when the lot of you get there, a guard kind of casually looks over your cart, lifts up the the thing, sees that there's a bunch of like glass and shit, and just waves you through without any questions. Sweet. All right. Awesome. Um, okay. Gra, why did you leave the frog? So. Oh, you mean uh, the bully Growl? Yes, um, he's he's outside in the forest, and I, I, I'm I'm assuming Growl, being a bear, will kind of be able to find this spot pretty well. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll, be well able you to... you know where he was. You'll be able yeah. to track your paces back to that yeah. spot. Yeah. Not I want to say that I am checking my bag probably every hour or two mm -hmm. for those. Uh, Little gremlins, gremlins that like get in your bags or whatever. Yeah, mm, right. They're, they're swamp gremlins, so there shouldn't be any out here. But if you check your bag, um... just to be sure, you still don't find any. Good. All right. Uh, mm. Does Garp camouflage in the swamp? I have natural camouflage. Um, yeah. I have seventy-five percent chance to hide in natural settings. Okay. So we don't necessarily see you then. Yeah, I'm if hiding. And I'm waiting to for them. Yeah, yeah you well, want, you Neil? will D100? easily see them. No, 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 you you're watching the road where they're coming out. You can't. I know, not but see do they them. see me? Ah. Does he get yes, the? Give me a jump on us. No. Well, they they see me. Um, for you, there. No. you don't notice Garp right away, but you do catch the glinting of a halberd um, that's sort of sticking out and catching the dying rays, dying rays of the late afternoon sun. Um, that will reflect and draw your attention to the <clears throat> cloaked figure below. Yeah, so hold up. There's somebody with weapons over there. I'll come out. Oh, Finally. It's you. I know. Did sorry, you guys though. get everything? Yeah, we got everything. Oh, we, we got everything this? and more. Um, made a little bit of money, spent a little bit of money. 
I had and, so many uh, sausages. You were, you have no. It was so gob. It was so many sausages. Uh, did we bring some? Uh, well, did You'll you finish me... the whole plate? Yeah, of course. Uncork well, a bandolier your belly. on my side, and I will um, take it and like put it over me and like dump all the water on me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, you like moisturize it and like bit. rub it in? <laughs> Maybe not with know. those exact motions, but <laughs> you gotta do I need to like you gotta rub it in like top to bottom, you know? Do I need to like rub it in, or can I just like dump it and then keep going? Can I uh, make an intelligence check to... to determine whether I know what he's doing there? Like why he's in doing a moment. It. Um, you do need to make sure that your skin is not drying out. And so it's not just like dump overhead. You do need to make sure it gets over all of your body. And so there might be areas where like, you know, you splash it on your shoulder and then you just got to like rub it underneath so that the bottom of your arm also gets a little bit of moisture on it. So you think it, it takes about a round to do? Um, or do you think it takes two rounds? I think it takes him one minute to okay. dump some water on yourself, but like a full minute. Like a know? full round. Second yeah, and that's assuming you're minutes. not wearing any clothes. If you yeah. if you've got like clothes on, you're gonna have to take them off to properly <clears throat> okay. uh, moisturize. Cool. Uh, sounds like it would be pretty obvious that that's what he's doing. So I say yeah, uh, he's rubbing water all over himself. <clears throat> that's pretty... Let's get back on the road and get back to the swamp. Pick up. That'd be good. All right. Uh, as we can still make some we, good miles before nightfall. As we enter the forest, Grau's gonna <laughs> plop back into bear form. It's just how he's most comfortable. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna ask Grow some questions in bear form. Uh, Wait, Grow, you you're pulling the cart. You can't be a bear. Oh, can I not pull the cart as a bear? No, it's a, a cart with handles. It doesn't have like a yoke and a harness on it. Okay, it's meant to be pulled by men. Mm. Um, who was pulling it on the way here? Because I was in bear form on the way here. It's, it was Gar. probably me. It's all yeah, yeah, it was on empty on the way in here, so <laughs> it was fine. I have 17 okay. strength. I'll take the cart and I'll pull it. Okay, but okay. you're quite slow if you're not leaping, aren't you? I can't do the leaping thing anyways, but my speed is six. Yeah, so you're pretty slow. Though everyone will be moving at half pace. I think you rode in the cart part on um, part of the way here. Yeah. Just so everyone would So it sounds like speed. Renatus has to pull the cart. <laughs> Sorry, Grau. Oh, I can Renatus? I can yeah, I can yeah. stay yeah. in orc form, I guess. Um mm -hmm. he would just be uncomfortable too. Um mm. Like holding in a yeah, you like probably a say something like, "Oh, I want to go back in bear form." No, yeah, because he, he's like, "You, you ever pull the cart? You ever lackey? go on a first date and you have to hold in a fart the entire time?" <laughs> yeah, that's what it's that's like. That's what's being in in non bear form is like for Growl. So he's gonna express some discomfort with this, <laughs> and maybe he's not very good at like expressing dude. that yet. But he's always gonna like you know go down and like scratch himself and like kind of bear out a little bit. And you guys are kind of gonna probably gonna notice that something's up, right? <clears throat> mm hmm. Yeah. Pull the cart, well, it's lackey. In, <laughs> it's in one of these moments while you're pausing to, um, you know, admonish Growl for for trying to uh, itch his belly with his teeth in human form. Orc form. That you'll orc form. Thank you. That you'll notice. Uh, there's a someone following you on the road, which is not unusual. It's a road. Cars and people and carts and horses all head in one direction or the other. So. It's not unusual for someone to be behind you on the road. Uh, Ooh, I notice um, first. Can we yeah. see that? Perception check. Sure. Everyone just roll a d20 because it could be anyone. Everyone, everyone's equally likely except for Grau to notice. Uh, I super Garth don't notice. See it. Yeah. I will yeah. peer over um, and not mention it to the party. Um, I'll just keep going. Sure. Well, then Arrakis then will notice it moments later with the four. Yeah. Yeah, I stop and look over my shoulder and then keep walking, and I try and steal glances at them. Is it one person? Yeah. The uh, the reason I'm calling this out, because there have probably been other people on the road behind you that have either passed you or that you have, you know, um, pulled ahead of, and you've probably seen other people coming this way. Like, I'm not going to call out each and every person yeah. on the road. Assume that there's people all the time. Um, the reason we're calling this out is because it's a half orc on a horse and a half orc on a horse should rather quickly overtake the party yeah. um, and instead they're not overtaking you they're going 
you know, at a very nice, gentle pace. Maybe he's just trying to, to save the horse, you know? You don't want to run them too slow, uh, too hard, otherwise they'll get exhausted, or even horses tired. And they're following from about 100 feet behind you, um, and just sort of gently plodding. Am I right in thinking that a half orc could quite possibly be working for the the government, for lack of a better word, the Varasi state? Yeah, I mean, anyone could be working for the state. Yeah, but they employ monsters, right? The wizard in the swamp employs monsters. <laughs> if that's the well, case, yeah. then Garp will speak up, and he'll um, kind of well. drop back to where Renatus is, mm -hmm. um, nudge him, and say... Look over your shoulder. I think we're being followed. Um, it's a uh, half-orc on a horse. I say, Renatus will say, say something to them. We're always being followed, <laughs> young swamp hopper. Uh, and um, I will describe a plan to the party. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to stage a short stop to test if this person is following us. Um, my suggestion is that we get Grau to basically sit down on the side of the road like he needs a rest um, and we'll kind of chill out you know just like like we're taking like we're taking a breather okay ideally around like a little corner like if we can get slightly out of sight of the orc for so that they have to get closer to us and then we can observe mm -hmm. when they see us stopped do they stop or do they continue and try to get past us and if they try to continue to get past us we should start up at the exact same time that they get in line with us and try to talk to them and kind of do a oh hello fellow traveler how's it going a casual interrogation that's the plan that Renatus would like to do and yeah. we'll discuss this for a minute or two as we walk so we'll as soon as Renatus outlines this plan I move away off the road Neil into some trees yeah no like okay. um I'll follow as well but I will kind of say um Grau over here we're gonna park the cart and you'll get a rest come on okay yeah so, like, so, 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 sounds good sounds good and then we'll park it, um, like, over here. Okay. Yeah. You can just pull the cart off real quick-like. Um, and everyone will hop off to the side of the road. And the horse-mounted half-orc will kind of continue plodding along down the road. And as he gets um, close to then... us, I'm like, all right, come on, let's get going. We're like, we got to make time. we got to get these back. And I'll get the party starting to move as the half-orc gets close to us. Okay. Party can pick up again. Um, what does the orc do? I'll toss a glance as I'm coming out, um, a perception check to see, I guess, what the orc is like looking at, who they're looking at intently. Wait. The fuck was that thing that you just yeah, did that what, thing again? What the Mr. fuck was Moot? that, Moot? Wait, this? Yeah, how'd you do Whoa. that? Oh, there's like a Hello. new update for Roll20 that I did. I don't know what it's doing oh, on your screen, though. It looks like uh, yeah, we're seeing good. the movement rate in just a slightly different box. Oh, nice. It's sick. I don't know how to do how that. Do you, how do you so do it? You're gonna, I mean, it's the you, same you, information, it's just in a different form factor. Better. You're going to go to setting? Well, it's just going to mess all your stuff up. We'll do it on the break, I'll tell you. Okay. Okay, right. okay, okay. Oh, the toggling UI redesign? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, right. um, so yeah, I will throw it up perception check. I'm trying to like... I don't know if you want perception or charisma. I kind of want to gauge what they're looking at. Like, you can see someone, if someone's happy, and you can also see if someone's, like, concerned or, like, wary. So that's what I'm going to throw up. What do you want? Uh, I want charisma if you're trying to read their face. 16. You know, half-orcs, <laughs> man. They kind of got this stoic, stern um, poker face on, and the uh, person's not really betraying much emotion. But as you start to pull, you know, you've moved off to the side of the road, they're coming up, you begin to pull back on the road, the road's not that wide, they just slow their horse enough that you can gently take the spot in front of them. Because it's, it's not a big road, and no one wants to, like, ha bump up against one another on the road. And I'll say they're, as this interaction right is happening... Oh, uh, wait, Neil, 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 I stay away from the group. Okay. <clears throat> As this interaction's happening and we're kind of coming on the road and he's like slowing down. Hello, speak I'm Grau. Hello, I'm Grau. I'm from far away. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Grau. Focus I get on that pulling the cart. The Bullywog has this cunning plan. He's about to like, he's formulating it. He's got this thing. And then the, the, the bear just immediately starts talking and torpedoing the, the Bullywog's plan. I give plan. the death eyes to the bear and then say what I was going to say. Um, do you want to pass? You're on a horse. I know we're taking up the the cart path 
Um, the half orc just sort of slows their speed, doesn't really respond, doesn't really even meet your gaze, and just. I'm going to move them backwards because mm-hmm. there's not more road in front of us, but they will just slowly slow their pace until they are at further and further behind you. Well, a respectful distance. No one wants to be tailgating on the road. That's a. Well, I just asked him if he wanted to pass uh, us, and then he slowed even further down and ignored me. Yeah. I- I, I, well, what I wanted to do was, like, as we were close, I wanted to fall in step beside him, ask him, oh, traveling alone, to, like, have a casual conversation with him. Yeah. Well, that, that might have been the plan, but Grouse started shouting, and then the, everyone started moving on the road. And if am I understanding right that Arrakis is leaving the party? Like, everyone else is moving forward, and Arrakis is just hanging back? Well, no, I was hoping... falling so... forever and forever behind? <laughs> if this they is... start to move forward... We had a plan, have... and then we've started to deviate and do random shit. Yeah, well, there was a plan. <laughs> well, yeah, hold on. It started not... to interact, Cause, and cause then everyone moving. did a million... Well, you we, were we, moving. We hold we on. Start... Okay, yeah, yeah. We start to go... We start to go a little bit. Like, we're getting the card on. We're starting to take a move. Wait, so says hello wait, I want to ask, I wanna, I wanna ask waiting, an out-of-character right? question. Do you guys yeah. actually want to torpedo the plan that I explained, where, like, we start moving and I fall back to talk to the guy? with your? No, that, that's not the plan at all. Okay, Brown, because you have torpedoed I'm just, the plan. Brown doesn't <laughs> understand well, I, didn't, the I guess you didn't, you didn't say he that you were going to... He doesn't understand this interaction. All he knows sure. is that when people come up to you, you greet them. That's what he's doing. But you didn't say that you were going to, like, fall back and go talk to the guy. At least I didn't understand. Okay, I want a VOD check. Viewers, Vod check. <laughs> I didn't understand <laughs> that we're you were walk putting... All right, all right, all right. Hey, and yes. walk from a bit side. One yeah. outside. The plan but was I... we slow down, and then we get to interrogate him. I, I know I said those words. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I, so yeah. he's. I thought we were waiting for him to pass us while we took a break. No, he's waiting for him. We were going to start up about the same time as him. So it's kind of like, oh, hello, fellow traveler. You're traveling alone. Right. Would you like to join our convoy? Where are you heading uh, to? It, then we okay. can have a conversation a... with him. And it's okay. a bit of a, you know, it's not a super wide road. It's a little awkward to put the two side by side. Um, and as he was approaching, you said, hey, everybody, let's get back on the road. And you started yep. to move in the direction of the road. And then the rider slowed down so that you could merge in front of them. And then okay. I speak to the driver and I say, hey, you're on a horse. Do you want to go past us? And right. then he and doesn't they, say anything. So we're not going to say anything. keep he walking forward. He slows the pace. Yeah, so we're going to wait. Does that mean you come to a dead stop? We come to a dead stop, yes. Okay, so you're I'll coming to a dead wait. stop. The writer comes to a, a pause as you come to a dead stop at this point. Arrakis is still off the side of the road quite a ways. Sorry. Hiding in the shadows. Okay. And so, Garp, you're looking at him, and yes. Renatus Fur, you're looking at him? I'll say to Renatus, Okay. Is this guy fucking deaf? Or slow. Um, he might not speak the language. I'll say, and uh, I'll turn to the rider and I'll kind of cheerfully wave to him, of like, "Hail, uh, are you traveling alone? You could join us for the night if you'd like." The half orc will meet your gaze directly, um, and sort of just like he's got a spear. He's traveling, you know. He's got a. It also doubles as a lance if need be, and he just sort of waves the lance down the road. As if to say, continue on. That's a pretty reasonable interpretation of his actions, yeah. Hello. Uh, okay, what sort of uniform Hello. is this guard? Is this person wearing? Oh, it was got the uh, the uniform of a scout in the Verasi army. Okay. Uh, we can assume that they are just a scout, and we are just being hyper suspicious. So I will. You know, I'll chat to the party and I'll say, "All right, let's carry on." But we're gonna we're gonna go slow to the point where we're gonna go like slightly slow to the point where if they stay behind us, then it's really obvious that they're following us. That's what's already happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's already yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. I'm just well, uh, reiterating it. As you move, you get like a few hundred feet down the road. They will. Is a rack is coming at that their... point? How thick is the under? Like, how thick are the trees, Daniel? Can I follow them to the side of the road? You can follow them to the side of the road but you will not be hidden from the scout yeah okay so i start moving from the side of the road and then i'll casually walk back into the group pretty upset at the fact that this guy is clearly a uh, a scout for the army yeah i'll uh, make casual conversation with a like have a good bathroom trip and i'll kind of like laugh and joke with him um <laughs> yeah. i'm afraid to make that kind of thing the, public the scout will pause and let you get a good click and then continue on behind 100 feet behind you and when you slow your pace to like no one in their right mind would ever follow behind us at this pace they would pass us 
they continue to keep pace about 100 feet behind you. Mm. It becomes very so, clear. Wait, 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 question. Um, the magistrate of the town, like, mm-hmm. were the guards in the town dressed in the same uniform? Or, like, could this guy just be sent by the magistrate to keep an eye on us? Or is this clearly from someone outside the town? So, there are a lot of different uniforms depending on what you're doing. If you are, like, a town guard, you're going to have, like, a uniform that matches the town guard of this place. And if you are, you know, a regular infantry soldier from this region, you're going to have this region's uniform. And if you're going to be this thing, like, there's a lot of different uniforms. It's very clearly one of the Verasi uniforms. Um, You're all in this area where the Empire is. Everyone give me a intelligence check to see if you would have picked up on the specific markings and rankings of officers and soldiers so and enlisted today. men. Wait, was that an int check? Yes. Oh yeah. my god, Growl, that's amazing. So um, I got a 32. Yeah, so... Nick, you're definitely going to be able to tell that this is one of the... Um, that this is the uniform that you would have that's sort of like the inter-service uniform. Someone that would act as a messenger between different regions or different places. Um, someone that might be like moving things fairly quickly down a road. Or someone that might act as um, like a, a local scout for an area. It's sort of a... The light, in, the light cavalry uniform how what's the light situation like what's the prevailing light conditions it's late afternoon we've gone down to like five or so and it's five or six in the afternoon by now after everyone had to get the hell out of town and walk for a while so the sun is getting low it's casting long shadows but it's still out enough that it's light enough you can easily see everything i will say to renatus i'm not comfortable with this we should confront it um uh, Renatus will kind of nod and agree and says um, confrontation is not always as successful as deception. And I'll start to throw out suggestions of how we can throw off the scent here. Uh, one of my does, suggestions Does this mean is, the party has come to a dead stop? No, it's all we're walking. walking. No, we're walking. Well, we're still like walking. American, okay. American TV show, you know, we're walking and talking. The, the first deception plan that Renatus has come up with is um, when we make camp tonight. Um, Grau will go to the bathroom and like he'll walk off into the forest and go to the bathroom uh, shapeshift into a bear and then attack our camp and kill us all so the scout is like oh shit a bear just attacked the camp and he heads back he's like those people just got killed uh, that's going to be the plan to throw off the scent um, uh, deceit, deception not confrontation discretion is the better part of valor um the art I, I of war is up. entirely about deception. When you suggest that, I think that's a good idea. Except I don't think it should. I don't think Grouch should attack our camp. I think you should just go and maul that guy. Um, the I entire time that guy up, he looks like want, he could kill Grouch. I just want the audience imagining the entire time that um, you guys are talking about this. Grouch is still like so uncomfortable. He's like itching himself. He's like, mm. he's like trying to scratch himself with his, if, if, for the audience if anyone's seen the the death note scene the potato chip scene where in the background ryuk is really he really wants the apple so he's freaking out while these guys are talking that's what's happening right now with grow he's like not comfortable in the situation at all and he does not mm. understand the gravity of this he's just a normal scout renatas so he's i will nothing the other thing uh young swan popper is that the, Not a swamp hopper. The important piece of information is that we need the scout to go home and report us missing or dead. How are you going to <laughs> fake your death? Um, we don't have any... I'll just think, Grau, can you pretend to eat people? I'll turn to Grau and ask him. Can I? Can you pretend? Are, are you capable of pretending to kill people, Grau? In bear form. Okay. Can you explain pretending when you're a small bear little baby bear when you fight and play with other bears oh. you don't really try to hurt each other right oh it's about strength small yes yeah can you do that with us tonight can you play. pretend we're food? we play <clears throat> we the thing play. is yes yes the thing is yes the thing is if the orc checks our bodies he's gonna know we're not dead well i mean the bear's gonna be bodies around. or 
That would be I'd... blood. A bear killing three men. Well, two men out of Bullywug. Doesn't even just necessarily be three have people to... lying down. It doesn't necessarily have to kill us. Just chase us off from the camp, cause chaos and confusion, and then the bear could maybe scare off the rider it's as well. Adding unnecessary risk. Why don't we just kill him? We can't just he has to, kill. He has to go home people. with a report because if he doesn't come home, it makes a ruckus. I've already surmised that you're a wanted man. Leaving bodies behind you is far more dangerous than a possible attack of a bear. <clears throat> well, what about I have an idea. Gets at the swamp? It's dangerous there. Let's try this first. And if it still follows us, or it doesn't make them go away, then we kill him. I think this is Fair. a good idea, but I think Grau needs to go at night and kill an animal and at least bring the blood back to put on us so that if he does check our body, it'll it'll seem more real. Go hunt mm. for, for like, a deer or a, a what? It's hard We're to not... hunt. It's not, I can't just, it's... It's not easy, yeah. I, not usually I find... Yeah. Usually I find the dead, the dead, or I, I, someone out. But it's it is hard to to chase a deer, fast. Renatus will point to the ferret on his shoulder and say, "If we can hunt a rabbit, a rabbit should have enough blood in it to at least make a convincing death scene." I think that's fair. Um, so I'll be on the lookout for like rabbits typically. So it's probably close to evening. It's um, rabbits are crepuscular, so they're typically more active during like the dusk and dawn. Um, so mm -hmm. if there's a, if I start if I see a couple of rabbits in a field, I will make my way over there. Um, and what we will do is we will identify as many rabbit holes as possible, and have a party member uh, stick their hand or a body part into the rabbit into each rabbit hole to make the um, rabbits smell danger from each of those holes. And then we'll send the ferret mm -hmm. down another hole, um, so the rabbits will be caught between the fear of the outside smell of danger and the ferret coming in to get them. So I as I understand have, it. I should also have no problem finding these rabbit holes. As, um, I, as I understand it, the party is going to continue down the road until they see rabbits. And then the party is going to stop, pull off the road, make search camp. the area for these rabbit holes and go under, do this rabbit thing, right? Because this is going to take time. The guy's, well, yeah, it's, it's the guy's minutes, right behind us. 20 minutes. Well, yeah, here, here, here. It's near camp time anyways well, it's, so this is when we do, get to camping yes sorry. this is when we're gonna get to camping then we'll yeah. go out we're gonna hunt like normal um probably bring a few rabbits back cook them eat them and then we'll do the thing at night so we'll put we blood will... on ourselves when growl comes in and then it yeah. does the well, fake attack let's let's just take this one step at a yeah. time here yeah right? um, what's the guy gonna do when we make camp Right. Yeah. A lot of things can happen between enacting the plan or starting the plan and finishing the plan. Agreed. I, sure. uh, uh, when, okay. Once we I pull think up... this is the time for our first break and okay. we can come back on the other side and sort right. out the details. Patreon.com forward slash save or die. Check it out if you want to see the after show. Oh. I'll be answering all of your questions. And thanks to Devin Nash for our awesome tokens. Devin Nash. True. Nice Devin, Devin, Devin Nash. Nash. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take us out quick. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save or Die Outcast. Our party this evening is a couple of cute little thumpers in a glade. Just, you know, munching on some grass. They pause when they see you coming by. They do that thing where they flatten down to the ground and their ears go back. Um, and they observe as the party pulls off the side of the road. And I, I have a question. I have a question for the whole party here. Crowds are sheep. Crowds are essence. We've already mentioned that even in gnome form, crowds get a finger bear. Do you think a bunny, and I don't know if bunnies are afraid of bears, I don't know if bears are bunnies, but do you think to a, a creature like a rabbit or a dog, the crowd might still smell of bear? I would imagine so. I feel like. It, it kind of depends on the nature of shapeshift, right? This is kind of... Does a up... druid still smell like a human if they turn into a bear? Like a regular druid? These are really hard to do. Yeah, because that would be weird, because then you could, like, tell if someone was a, you know, 
Well, the thing is that a bear, a bear has a stronger scent than a human, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you would be apt of that scent. Yes, I guess the elk has millions of mystical muscles that allow us to smell people at like long range. That's not a bear that can do it. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, I wonder if, like, what causes the smell of a bear, right? And is that thing transformed when he shifts to it? Well, what causes hunger is, you know, a series of hormone reactions in your body that is related to the fullness of your stomach and blood sugar levels and all this other jazz. But you retain your hunger. Like, sleep shifting is breaking the rules of reality Mm. and magic. So Mm. there's a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable that a shapeshifter might maintain a uh, if you are a if you have a sensitive nose, you might be able to sniff out a werewolf in a group of people, or dogs mm-hmm. might bark at a yeah. person, a werewolf mm-hmm. that's shapeshifted. I don't mm-hmm. think it's unreasonable that Growl might still smell of bear, but I would like the party's opinion. In my Hold opinion. On. We're having audio issues, I think, so we probably should wait a second because they can't apparently hear you or um, Potato too well. Oh, and it says Neil's underwater. He's just fixing it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Keep trying it out. We're going to keep going. Cool. So, mm. looks like it's wait. fixed. Sorry, just before you guys get into the rabbit shenanigans, I'm not partaking in this. And I'm watching the half orc. I want to know what he does when we break for camp. Just saying that, Neil. So if he's sure. sneaking up on us or anything like that, I'm watching. So you're going to totally. stay with the card. But before before we even get to any of this stuff, like you see the glade, <clears throat> you're going to move off. And I want to know about Growl and the smell of Growl. Ode de Growl. So. I, I don't think I would think of this. Most animals don't uh, actually have a smell. Um, because Excuse me? Like, <laughs> most animals that live in the wild, like, for example, rabbits don't have a smell because to have a smell is to make yourself easy to hunt. So the f- smell would be incredibly faint. Only the droppings would really smell. So what bears typically do is they'll rub themselves onto a lot of foliage and the foliage and moss will rub into their fur and they'll actually kind of just smell like sweet grass. Um, mm. Now, if you're near them when they poop or they piss, then that'll smell. But the actual bear itself, unless it's wet, where they're like, aromatic compounds on its fur and all that sort of because most animals don't sweat like humans right yeah that's true they they definitely leave like territorial marks when they like rub trees themselves on trees and stuff like that to signal most animals have scent glands for when they want to leave a smell like rabbits have a scent gland right under their chin right here that's why if if you see a rabbit come over to you and it does this thing that means it just claims well, there's you a as difference between intentionally leaving a scent and the smell that things have because for sure everything has a smell right you just might not be privy to it you might not notice it your nose might not be sensitive enough but everything has a smell but here's um, the thing having a really strong odor is like a super mm-hmm. huge evolutionary disadvantage which is why only really mm-hmm. farm animals and stuff have like a really strong odor because they no longer need to be selected away from having no smell right Okay, but if you're going hunting with a dog, the dog is still like able to track down animals that you're hunting, right? Yes, but you typically hunt with things like bloodhounds, which have like even ten times better smell than the average dog. Uh, that's true. Yeah, bears have a better smell than okay. that, even. Um, mm-hmm. But I yep. don't know if rabbits do. Yeah. Right. This is. I'm just. This. This is an opportunity to talk yeah. about growl's shape shifting. So the question is, would growl maintain? You know, if you walked up to Growl in a bar and he was all hot and sweaty from having eaten a bunch of sausages and he's got the meat sweats, does he smell like a stinky man or does he smell like a stinky bear? I think he definitely doesn't smell like a regular human. I think mm-hmm. he would have a unique aroma that maybe mm-hmm. smells Just tinged. Like unique. Yeah. Like yeah. A, maybe if you spent a lot of time hairy. around if you'd spent a lot of time around bears, you might recognize it's got a tinge of bear to it. But to mm-hmm. a normal person, it would just sound a bit, okay. smell a bit weird. So, yeah. So, if a regular uh, druid transforms into a bear and then goes into a uh-huh. bear camp, those uh-huh. bears probably should then smell something like, like a like, bit off, like, oh. Mm-hmm. You're not like my kind. Yeah? You know, yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I think I that think, makes sense. I think that makes sense. Shape shifting is not 
a perfect transformation. I mean, there are some shape-shifting spells that will make you like 100% that thing, including losing your mind and literally just becoming that. But outside of that, any sort of temporary or controllable shape-shift, I think there are small telltale signs here and there. And I think the scent of Growl um, will always be a little bit bearish. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's fine. Okay. But also, you I'm... probably won't notice unless you're a fucking God yeah, bear favorite. expert. Yeah. I really don't think around. most ordinary people would notice. Um, yeah. You know, would... maybe if they were hanging out with Groud, they might say to someone like, "Oh yeah, he smells a little funny." But that would probably be it. I don't think that would indicate yeah. he's a shapeshifter in and of w itself. Would like druids who spend a lot of time around animals or people who maybe also shapeshift? Would they be? They'd be like, "Holy shit, this guy smells like a bear." Would they pick up on it? They would have a better chance, maybe? Un I think it is reasonable for someone who is specifically attuned to the oddities of smells vis-a-vis -vis shapeshifting to notice such changes or to be more apt to notice. I think a werewolf might be able to sniff out other shapeshifters if there was someone, if they ran into a human but the human was actually a bear who was polymorphed into a, a human form. I think a werewolf or something like that might be like, there's something off about this person. Um, there are probably some checks involved to see if they could determine what, but for the, oh, the overwhelming majority of people and creatures, it might just be, you know, a <clears throat> curiosity. But I feel like, let's say like you're, you transform into a bloodhound to go mm. into someone's house I think that the bloodhounds could probably have a very easy time smelling the difference because their nose are so acute. Yeah. Well, okay. the argument, well, the question is, are we saying, does he sm have like a distinct smell to humans or to other animals? Because to another animal, well, same, same. he definitely smells like a bear to like a rabbit. If a rabbit's a scared of bear smell or like deer or any, any sort of animal that relies on scent carried on the wind. But that's the thing. Where, which way is the wind blowing? Is the wind blowing towards the rabbits or away? Well, I'm not talking about the rabbits are just an opportunity to bring up the conversation. I don't think it's going to be an issue here because rabbits if are rabbits scared ass right. creatures. If any person or creature approaches them, they're going to bolt, right? So the grouse bareness, I don't think will affect our rabbits. I just wanted to use that as an opportunity. Was, I got it's it. It's an interesting, yeah, it was just an thing, interesting thing to think question. about. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. So okay. the party pulls the cart off to the side of the road. Um, you've seen some rabbits. You're going to make camp here. Arrakis, you specifically said you wanted to wait on the road. No, I don't wait on the road. I, we're making camp here, so I'll pull the, the cart into where we're making camp, and then I will like let them go and do their thing, and I hang around by the by the cart. We're going to pull over an eye so, on I'm the so uh, I'm going to give you a mic check map. on the production center real quick. Mic check on the stream. I hope I sound better now. I'm terribly sorry. We're going to pull over here, Koibu. Yeah. Um, this will be like the area that we stop. Yeah, it's a nice I'm little just, area. There's a little. I'm actually gonna bring you to a new map and let you pick from there. <laughs> Thank you. Nick. Transport new me. Map. Bring me. I gotta find the right map. Teleport. <laughs> Teleport. <laughs> just chills. Just give me... Watch Nick. I'll do it. <laughs> it's gonna take a moment. Oh. Okay, one more time. Oh, mic check. Mic check. Checking now. Sorry. All right, we're going to do this one, and we're going to do... Trying checking the mic on the stream right now. Mic check, mic check. I'm so sorry. This one. Okay. All right, I'm going to bring the party over to here. All right, new map here. Um, I guess where this little wooden bench is. is no, maybe it will put up on this little raised section up here is where we should go. Uh, yeah, we you know. can you put your thing? I'm talking like up here. Oh, okay. this is yeah. this is a well traveled road. Um, I can't yeah, like totally. there are scouts. This is not a dang, like we're deep into patrol territory, right? So this is very is... civilized area. You should not have to worry about monsters on the road. Maybe bandits, maybe thieves, um, but maybe the occasional then? monster, but pretty unlikely. There's a monster literally following us. So. Yeah. Hey, he's a he's a half orc. Okay, chill. But we like we try, we left from like mid mid afternoon, so I can't imagine we've gone that far. So we're probably like we could probably mm -hmm. still see the city if we climb a tree. Yeah, you might be able to see like a little bit of the evening fire smoke rising from the city. Maybe a spire um, if you're lucky, depending on the you know the topography. You are gen generally headed downhill, so that does kind of get in the way of seeing the city. Instead of if you were heading uphill, it might be easier. Um, 
but yeah, it's more illustrative of the fact that we haven't gone that far, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't sure. gone far, right? A few miles. Can I have um? Can I have access over the cart so I can like move it and stuff? Oh yeah, I will give. If anything, everyone. I would like access to be able to move everyone. You want to move everyone? I want to always be able to move everyone. Yeah. I don't. Because then I can put us in good places, like <laughs> up here. I don't know about that. I want to people... let other people maintain yeah. control over their characters. That is uh... okay. Well, they're not watching. We're up here. I know. They're not washing. All right. Girl's hanging out here. Perfect. Cool. So this is the spot. And Arrakis, you, you, what are you going to do? You said you well, wanted to where, where are they, the road. Where are they hunting rabbits? I'm assuming it's not exactly right here. No. Well, you yeah. saw, you're coming along the road and someone spotted, you know, a rabbit down over here. Yeah. Okay. And... So they're over there. I'm, over, I'm up here next to the cart. Okay. Well, I think like... the party gets, brings the cart off the road and then like sets up camp and then is going to hunt rabbits. It's a it's a multi-step yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Well, I watch the heart. From the moment we come off the road, I'm watching him. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. Yeah. Um, and you can see as the, the party makes camp over there, the half-orc will sort of bring his little horsey on over here and come round to this spot in the bend of the road and uh, dismount and uh, proceed to like take care of his horse. He's dismounting as well. Is it, are we are we pulling it to camp early, or does it you know make sense that he'd pull in now as it, well? It's a reasonable camping hour, but you know, the guy's definitely following you. And now that you're making camp, he's dismounting and getting ready to make camp, or at least tending to his horse. Maybe he's going to move on with his day. Um, but I, I do think that there's something a little suspicious about this, right? Surely the DM's not just fucking with you really hard for an no, hour. No, it's suspicious I don't... as fuck, yeah. Yeah, let him do it. We're enacting our plan of going and looking for rabbits after we just set up yeah. our camp. You're right. Neil... So we do the rabbit plan. We go stick our hands in holes. We send in ferrets in other holes. Yeah, Grau? Did we figure out, because we, last time during the session we, we were like missing this info, what special ability Grau has relating to uh, perception and stuff like that that we agreed on during character building? the sniffability of sense yeah. you have a percentage chance to track sense or something like that yep <clears throat> skills and powers we grabbed grow a fancy pantsy tracking this uh, this character's sense of smell is so acute that he can track as per the tracking proficiency with a 50 percent chance of success normal modifiers for old or confused trails may apply all right so you can track just about anything with 50 percent chance if the trail is older penalties if it's newer bonuses cool okay um cool us three are gonna go and see if we can find some rabbit stuff after we set up our camp. yeah who's us three yeah. all right. it's gonna be you me and renatus fur all right mm -hmm. so renatus will explain the uh basic idea of uh just the ferret is trained to hunt small vermin-like creatures, like groundhogs, rabbits, stuff like that. Things that we can get, um, maybe even like the occasional toad. Uh, it's a hunter by nature, and it primarily likes to eat meat, I believe. Rabbits are carnivorous, I think. Or, sorry, rabbits are not carnivorous. They are herb herbivores. Ferrets are carnivorous. They're carnivorous um, in Monty Python. <laughs> true. <Yeah. laughs> maybe we need a canis rabbit in this world. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be... Uh, that's a request for me. I want a dangerous were rabbit. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. So the basic premise is we're all sitting at a rabbit hole. So let's say a typical rabbit warren, uh, depending on the type of rabbit, will have you know a certain number of holes and a certain number of rabbits living in there. Um, mm -hmm. So if there's three of us plus a ferret covering a certain number of holes, um, we have a really high percentage chance to actually either grab a rabbit as they try to escape the warren as the ferret goes in, or the ferret will catch rabbits and the rabbits will be too scared to come out because they'll smell and sense us uh, at each mm -hmm. hole. So it just depends on how many, like you probably roll a D, I don't know, a D6 plus two to see how many holes are in the warren. Um, that's our chance to catch a rabbit or something. You figure that out. Okay. Um, well, you've got time. Growl is a bear. Um, growl in bear in, a, in your orc form now. And you're hunting rabbits. Are you able to maintain your orc form while hunting rabbits? Is that a thing Grau does? Um, Does he have self-control? Uh, fuck. 
Man, if he sees a rabbit... Ah, the thing is... It, bears... I, I feel like a bear would only, like, super try to chase after a rabbit if he was starving. Um, because, from what I understand, it's usually not worth it for a bear to, like, go chasing after rabbits super hard. Because mm -hmm. it's not super likely for him to get one. If he's starving, he's going to do it. But I think he would have self-control here. Okay. You had a lot of food That's in fine. town. Yeah. Yeah. So, the party goes around. You've got time. There's some rabbits here. You've got a ferret on your side. I'm going to make a quick check to speed things along. And with a 13, I think uh, the ferret will pull out a little young rabbit from the warren. And bring it on out. A little babe. A tiny little rabbit the size of your fist. Beautiful. It's not enough blood then, yeah? Well, I mean... Hmm. It's up for us, or up to us to make work, I guess. <laughs> I look um, at this ferret, uh, and I ask Renatus, do you think this is enough? No, there are probably more rabbits down there. Uh, I'm looking around. Have I seen any rabbits, like, dart out of holes that we don't have covered and run off? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I start making ranged attacks. If I get a chance, I'll throw a rock at a rabbit. I'll, you know, if, I, if I've got a dagger, I'm going to make a shot if I see a rabbit nearby. I'm I'm writing in that attack. Yeah, roll me roll me a d twenty. Throw your Based. dagger. Boom! I miss. It's a wild miss. Hitting a uh, fast moving rabbit's a hard thing. Renatus, uh, send the um send the fair back in one more time, and I'll be ready to hop at one of the holes and I'll point. Um, I'm assuming there's holes like I don't know thirty feet away from me. There's a lot of there's, many of the rabbit holes are visible and many of them are well hidden. Sure. I will ready an attack to hop and attack a rabbit that runs out. Okay. Yeah, send the ferret back in to try to find a bigger rabbit. Ferret heads back in. You can hear the squeaking underground of the rabbits screeching in defense of their young. And moments later, a rabbit will burst from I one jump. of the holes. You leap with a, I think it's a plus two to hit because it's a charge. Mm, I don't think that I get that now. Isn't the leaping attack at plus two? <laughs> God damn it. Doesn't fucking matter. It is. Yeah. Sorry, I'm wrong. You're also oh, it's a natural one. Oh, my God. All right. You leap. You miss. The rabbits are escaping. The plan isn't going well. We don't have to sit here for hours and do this. You've got one rabbit. Uh, orc check? Um, yeah, he's dismounted the, the horse. He's taken Wait. off the saddle. He's, uh, you know, brushing the horse down, tending to its needs. Is this guy uh, making like a, a food? Is he making like a tent or something? Or does it look like he's going to be sleeping on a bedroll? Neither. He hasn't busted out any camping supplies. He's just okay. doing the like, I'm tending to my horse's needs, which might mean he's just giving the horse a bit of a break and he's going to get back on. Or maybe he's just, you know, taking his time. Again, a good just... horse rider tends to their horse quite a lot. Now that he's chilled out, I'm not staring at him. I'm keeping an eye on what he's doing. I want you to let me know if he's, like, lying down or sitting comfortably. Like, if he looks like he's in a situation where he might be, you know, thinking about going to sleep. Right. I'll let you know when that happens. Okay. We're not just going to go back with one rabbit. We're going to keep doing this. Um, we will spend an hour, maybe two hours, well, gathering. The sun the will set at that point. Um, so we got one rabbit before the sun set. Yeah, hunting is a difficult thing. Yeah. You know, you oftentimes hunters go out and get absolutely nothing for their efforts. And that's with firearms and, you know, duck calls and all sorts of things. Okay. Yep, um, for sure. We'll have to we make this work. Rabbit. Yeah. Um, um, I'll also uh, let the party know that I've had another idea. Um, since the horse is desaddled and uh, not. I assume not tied up. Uh, another plan could be to have the bear appear at the scouts camp and scare the horse off, breaking its, if it's tied to a tree, breaking the rope, maybe killing the horse. Now that scouts got a dead horse, it's going to be a lot harder to follow us, right? Uh, I throw the rabbit down. down. Can't you just walk? Yeah, we're on foot too, so. No. Yeah. Isn't that like but, very easy? <clears throat> yeah, but then we get to the swamp. He follows us to the swamp. People disappear in the swamp all the time. Yeah. I like that no, plan can... better. I 
think that'll make Arrakis happy too, Renatus. I will uh, toss the hair to Garp. Or sorry, to Growl. Here you go, buddy. Um, but Renatus, you need to make damn sure that this fucking bear knows what he's going to do. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll spend um, the evening as the sun is going down talking to Growl. And I'm like, okay, Growl. Um, yes. Do you understand the plan? And I'll explain the plan to him. He's going to go off to the bathroom in the night. Yes. Um, uh, he, and I explained bathroom is like when you go poop. Right? Yes, 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 poop, yes, yes. You, no, you, I know. You bend I know. down, you crouch, and you squeeze. Was, yes, no, I was yeah. and in, in the house when I'm with Autumn. No, don't go. Don't go in on the chairs or the table. No, we, we go in the, in the toilet, yes. In the chamber park, correct. Yes, yes. Um, so you're going to pretend, you're going to play like you're going for a poop. Um, mm -hmm. But instead, what you're going to do is when you're out of sight, is you're going to turn into a bear and sneak around to mm -hmm. the orc scout's camp. And if you can, mm -hmm. try to either kill or scare off his horse. Mm hmm and make okay. a commotion and once okay. you've scared off the horse and maybe scared off the orc you're going to come okay. back to us um and we will be observing in case you get into trouble okay i could could there be trouble it could be well bad. we haven't done a proper scout yet but there might be other campers on this road we are pretty close to town so you might need to be ready. And I'll kind of, I'll talk with Growlick. If you get into trouble, the forest is this way. You mm -hmm. just bear form sprint as fast as you can into that yes. forest yes. away because that's what a bear would do. And okay. then meet us like at the next town. I can, I can make my way back. It's, it's no problem. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um... So I've explained the general principle of the plan, the goal of the plan, the backup plan in case things go wrong, where we'll be, what he's doing, um, if it goes, yeah. if it goes right, I go to join you guys as bear. Ooh, I'll turn to I'll turn to Garp and Arrakis. What do you think we should do? If if the plan is successful, what should Garp do? Do you well, have uh, any more shapeshifts left, Garp? I if the orcs. Ho I if can. The orcs horse flees, and then he looks over towards and sees us camping with a bear. He may have his suspicions. I can become human before the sun goes up, and when the sun goes up, I can go back into this or into gnome or whatever you want. Um, but is uh, yes, I could, I I could come back as human to the the, the camp. I, I I don't I don't know. Yeah, your your goal what is it? to try to wound the horse and the rider, and then disappear, run off, turn into a human, and then rejoin our camp it'll be suspicious that you came back as a human but we'll make that work <laughs> what do you think the chances Potato that this orc knows that he's already already knows he's a shapeshifter i'd say the chances are almost none <laughs> really well if he's come from the town he might know maybe that's why we're being followed i shrug the the gnome Let family me, uh... knows Said, so Renatus has bear. finished uh, explaining yeah. the plan and his participation in the night, and he's just like, "All right, these guys have got it," and he'll go <laughs> to sitting down. Uh, let me chilling. Posit an alternative option here. We wait for the orc to lie down. I cast sleep on him from over here. We're gonna check his pockets for a note, find out why he's following us. And if your spell I, fails, I don't think won't. he looked like he could read. So that's not nice to say about someone. <laughs> That's just what do you racist. Mean? It's not. He. He's a scout. He's carrying messages. He can yeah, probably but they read. don't need to read them. How do you? How do you see if someone can read from looking at you, them? Can you see it in their eyes? Is it like a human thing? It's. Oh. It's an education thing. It's the way people carry themselves. Typically, half orcs aren't educated in this society. They're discriminated against. People don't typically invest into half orc. Uh, with regards to training or education, it's actually quite rare for a half orc to be even a scout. And I go off onto like explaining like social like, dynamics, I can read? like I'm explaining to children who don't understand that half orcs aren't normal members of society. Arrakis, what do you mean what? your spell won't fail? And then when the orc wakes up, will he know that he was slept? No, he won't. And I'm telling you, it won't fail. What do you know about magic? That's why I'm asking you. Well, it's a particularly uh, potent spell. It would take someone very powerful to resist it. More powerful than any of us. So there's a chance. 
perhaps he's a high level or a powerful warrior, but I doubt it. Well, what do you think, Ren? I think that we should personally go with Araxis' plan. In theory, we could do both. You want to look? Direct confrontation. He'll be asleep. He won't know. I'll put him. It doesn't sleep. matter. I'll go there. I'll check his pockets. I'll read the note. I'll put it back. Then we can carry any on with plan. Your plan. Any plan does not that does not contain deception. When it comes to warfare, is a bad plan. This isn't warfare. Everything is about war. Everything is about power. If this is warfare, then it's one rider on his own. Let's just kill him. I could put him to sleep now. If we kill him, uh, our enemy gains useful information on him. If we send him home with false information, our enemy gains nothing, and we gain the cover of deception. I think that it is... Um... Hold on, let me roll an in check here. You're uh, underestimating our enemies here. <clears throat> if we're being followed, it means he knows something about us. Are we... No, it just means that they are curious about us. Are we doing something bad? <laughs> no, we're, in the we're not doing anything doing bad. A bad right plan. Okay, well... Why... Arrakis. Why can't he come with, with us? Because we don't... Well, Ren I Renatus sit will sit back. think about it. <laughs> Renatus will sit back and say, I have made very clear what I think the correct move is to do. However... I'm not the leader of this party. If you decide to go with a different plan, we'll have to deal with those consequences. We, we went to somewhere, we bought some glass, we bring it back and we are on our way. Is, is, he will go back, he will say that to his friends, no? Grau, some people are nosy. Do you know what nosy means, Grau? It means that when they smell something that smells strange, they have to go investigate it. Rabbits? Rabbits aren't nosy. They smell something strange and they run mm. away. Mm -hmm. Deer? They smell something strange and they run away. But bears, mm. bears are dangerous. And when they smell something strange, mm. they investigate. And Zira, and I'll turn to Arrakis, is a bear. And she smells something strange. And that's her nose right there. And I'll point at the orc and I'll say, and we need to make her smell something that smells innocent. Well, you, if Arrakis... Hang on. Ren has changed my mind. I think we should go with his plan. If I hate Ren the old is, man as much as the next guy. But he's if got Ren is right, back. and this orc has been directed by the magistrate from Tal, then we don't really have anything to hide. My worry is that he's following me. He's looking for me. And that's information that I need to know. If he's just following us because he's interested in us because we're a curious group, then why even attempt a plan at all? Why not just rest the night and carry on in the morning? I'll whisper, we don't want him following us back to Autumn. He's Correct. not going to follow Autumn us likes... through the swamp. If Autumn has guests the swamp, all the... Autumn has guests he's all the time. I've seen, I've seen... If orcs. he follows us through the swamp, we will kill him and feed him to the beasts. And they'll never be able to recover any scrap of him to cast Speak With Dead or whatever other sure. clerical bullshit they've got. But him knowing we went to the swamp is a problem. If you yes. kill other people and feed them to the beasts, other people will get really mad and not give you any more food, right? That's correct, Grau. Correct. And also, we're going to be passing through towns on the way. So every town that he passes through, that he has followed us, that will give information to whoever is... is yeah. So they'll know, okay, they went as far as town two, town three, town four. So they'll know that we got to the edge of the swamp and made our way to the maw. And they know, right, we need to cut off the trail of information as close as possible to give ourselves as much room as possible. Lady Autumn is a powerful and useful ally and any of the information that we can protect for her not only is useful to her, it's useful to us, it protects us, it protects her, and it's also good for us because when she, if she, recommends us to other people, they'll be like, I didn't even know they were working for you. And she'll be like, that's how good they are. I just think... I know you're new here, Arrakis, but not everything is actually about you. <laughs> <laughs> We've just purchased uh, a shitload of alchemical glassware. The magistrate knows that we've just bought that. The halflings knew who we were selling, who we were buying it for. I don't think Autumn's existence is some great secret. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You know her better than me. But is it not probably expected that this might be for her? Do people know about Autumn, Koibu? Is she how well we, known? How do we actually feel about this?
she lives in a swamp away from society for a reason. She most definitely keeps a low profile. You haven't really seen her working with anyone else other than the four of you now, but before that, it was just the three of you. <clears throat> Maybe every now and then again, <clears throat> there's um, another person, but you don't often see anyone else. Um, and to be honest, I don't know if you would have an answer to that question. You've never like asked around in town if anyone knows her. Um, she's but never I... said to you that you absolutely have to keep her and everything about her a secret. So maybe she's a known quantity. Um, but I'm right in thinking that my expectation is that the magistrate or the state at large would probably be aware of a relatively high-level spellcaster living near one of their towns. That Unless it was kept as a secret. No. Given that she's not told us to keep it secret. So hence my belief that we're not being followed because of the glassware. I think we're being followed for maybe the fact that the growl is a shape changer, or that they. I mean, maybe I'm paranoid, but I will remind. Does Arrakis, Arrakis say that in character? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, I'll, then I would. Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll remind Arrakis of the conversation that I had with Lady Zara, where she asked us for who she wanted to know specifically who the glassware was for, and I gave her a vague like, oh, you know, just a contract, and I didn't give her a specific answer, and I think she is the kind of person who, when she smells something and there's a puzzle that she doesn't fully understand she sees mm. threats everywhere they are she wants to know everything she's an exacting intelligent demanding and ruthless magistrate so she is exactly the kind of person who the second she got back to her thing was like go to that tavern and follow that wagon and don't okay. come back without an answer okay that's a fair argument um yeah. i'm gonna test your theory renatus i will okay. um the lights, there's still enough light, Neil, that I can see the orc in the twilight. Mm hmm Yeah. I will walk away from the camp as if I'm, like, going to the bathroom. Or not the mm -hmm. bathroom, but, you know, to relieve myself. I mm -hmm. want to try and get, gauge whether I think that he's watching me specifically. Autumn. Your character's paranoid as You fun. know. <laughs> yeah, mom. <laughs> Why do you think um... he's a shadow wizard? <laughs> You can see the orc, but seeing the direction of his eyes in this lighting is just too hard. You know, he's brushing his horse, and it just so happens that the horse well, is I... in between the camp and him. And so, like, he's looking across the horse in the direction of the party, just because that's how he's brushing his horse. Um, and then you walk yeah. off, yeah. and, like, you know, the head is not, you know, narrowed in on you, completely tracking you like a robot, but his eyes could yeah, be. Yeah, but what if I move you, further? I can tell. Well, but what if I move to a point where he'd have to turn to keep track of me? Uh, well, I think at that point you would have lost sight of him. There's trees, there's foliage, there, there's things in the way. If you're going to be that far to the side, you're going to be putting a lot more stuff between you and him, and you might lose sight of him. Neil, I have I'll a, talk to Ren. I have, oh, a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I've been under Autumn's, like, uh, Autumn's been like teaching me and taking care of me for a little bit now. Yeah, um, she's been so nice. Yeah, and she knows that I walk into fucking um, enca human encampments all the time. I have a big mouth. Mm -hmm. I have no sense of like social direction, mm -hmm. and I just kind of say mm -hmm. shit, right? Has mm -hmm. she ever instructed me in these towns how I should go about? If so, if someone asks about either a like maybe somebody recognizes something's off about me, somebody starts interrogating me, or b somebody starts me starts asking me about autumn uh, asked me questions about that has autumn ever instructed me on how i should behave in those situations no she has always been someone that you can come to with questions but she's never been like you need to do this right she's much okay. she's more of um like a confidant than she is a parent yeah okay so she's yeah. never she she didn't seem concerned with me going around to towns and talking about the fact that Autumn is out there, or that she's my friend, or that, like, if someone starts interrogating me about I'm a, if I'm a bear, or if someone, like, taught me. She doesn't She doesn't seem to really care she's if I... She's not concerned about the socially awkward person saying he's got a friend in the swamp. Okay. Got it. Yeah. While Arrakis walks off, I'll turn and talk to Ren. This guy thinks he's the fucking main character or something. Like, people are following him. <laughs> Ren will stay quiet for like a, a few moments. Um, and by this point, he has his tea set out and he's made tea. Um, particularly, he has made a green tea 
with a hint of lemon, um, mm. which is his favorite evening tea that he has before he goes to sleep. Um, and he's kind of like, he does this thing where he holds the tea up to his face and then blows on the warm water. So the smell like runs up to his face. It's like an old thing that his grandmother taught him that it supposedly keeps the skin young. And, you know, Ren looks quite young despite his age. Um, and then he will respond and say, everyone thinks they're the main character. Not me. I'm just a fucking bullywug. Ren will smirk at this and sip his tea. Mm. Okay. I walk back to the group. Um, and I will say, okay, well, I'll take your guys' uh, plan then. But if things go tits up, I'm, uh, I'm not taking responsibility. I mean, uh, Arrakis, what is your worry with this plan? What do you think will go wrong? I mean, it would take me all night to list the things that could go wrong. But, uh, you know, the bear ends up attacking the orc. Uh, he retreats back to the town and tells him that our party attacked him. And then either- what was before was a little scouting mission. Now it looks to be a, you know, they'll send out riders after us and hunt us down in the swamp. You're either the most paranoid man I've ever met, or you did something insane. And I'm not traveling with you unless you tell me which one it is. What did you do? It it wasn't insane. I just uh, took something that didn't belong to me. And at the time, I was employed by that. So What did you you take? A philosopher's stone? Does Arrakis have any tells? While he's saying this, like, does he touch something on his person as he's telling this story? Does he have a tell? Does he, like, instinctively, like, reach for, like, his bag I, or something? I, I think Arrakis has 17 willpower, so yeah. I think no is the answer to that. He okay, because Renatus is watching him carefully as he yeah. tells this story. I, uh, I took something that didn't belong to me. Um, by mistake, I hazard to add, but I won't get into the details. And I had to leave my employment. The problem is the... Uh, the state or the empire or whatever you want to say, they paid for my training and I was meant to be going into a job working for them. So taking off, you know, depending on how you look at it, you could say I owe them thousands of gold. No, that's not how I see it, but uh, that is probably how they see it. And so Renatus will kind of nod and say, I kind of like think to himself, so you'd be worth thousands of gold to turn in. (laughs) If you stole thousands of gold worth of items, no one is going to send riders after you. Your face isn't in wanted posters everywhere. So stop being fucking paranoid. Hold on, sorry. Ren will like shake his head like he's just heard something insane. What what are you talking about, Garp? If someone if he stole thousands of gold and he was recognized, of course they would send investigations after him. Renatus, don't bother trying to explain things to a bullywug. I mean, what does he know about real civilization? No Thousands offense. of gold is More than nothing you would think. to these people. Nothing to you. You know that you can't for yourself, build Ren. a fucking hole in the swamp out of gold pieces, can you? It's not always about the gold, Garp. Sometimes it's about the fact that you took it and haven't been brought to justice. These people have a... And Ren will pause for a second and sip his tea. As you do that, they I'll have speak. A, they have a philosophy. This... This isn't about justice. None of these people care about that. No, they care about revenge and pride and looking good to each other and bringing in someone who stole thousands of gold, if this magistrate noticed, could be used as a way to elevate her status. Well, look at me. I brought in this person who had stole thousands of gold worth of material. A rogue wizard. I'll kind of shoot a glance at Arrakis as I say that to see if he reacts. I mean, he's right. A rogue wizard, uh, traveling the land, untrained, untamed. Oh, seems like I'm, the powers that be untrained. would be very. Well, yes, you're right. They would I was be being dramatic. <laughs> I didn't leave my home for no reason. There are people looking for me. I know that. These... If you're on the run, then why do you still wear those? And I'll point to the red robes. You wouldn't understand. I'm a wizard. I, uh, you know, the day <laughs> I walk around as a commoner is the day I'd rather be dead. Wouldn't that be the best thing for you to do if you're hiding from people? Like I said, if I was giving up my robes, I'd rather cut my throat now. Grau is um, <clears throat> still in orc form, but he's laying on the ground like a bear who's like falling asleep almost. Like he's got his 
chin in his hands and stuff like this. He's just kind of laying down like this. He's looking up. He's like, "Why? Why do you care so much what he's wearing and where 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 he's from? I don't understand. We don't. We we're still being followed, and we still. How does this help us with with the orc? Can you? Can very, can we? Very very wise, Grow. Sometimes the most we, uh... simple people can help you see the easiest things. You're right, Grow. Yes. Let's now, spend Grau, less time psychoanalyzing me and more time talking about your plan. Do you remember what you were supposed to do, Grow? Uh, play, play, going to the bathroom and then come back and then uh, attack the horse and bite it and maybe try to bite the guy and then run, run away and maybe come back as a human. Good. Don't come back as a human. Oh, actually, okay. come back as a human. No, that's correct. I'm, I'm wrong. Okay. I'm sorry, Grau. That's what we that's what we say when we're wrong. Don't confuse I'm the sorry. back up. Okay. Okay. I come, right, I come one back. One more time. Can you repeat the story and then? Yes. I I go to the bathroom. I pretend, or maybe I have to go. Who knows? I come back as a as a bear, and uh, I yes, uh, I attack the horse. Um, maybe I attack the orc if he's you know not uh, poking me with his spear, and then I run away and maybe I come back as a as a human. I come back as a human, I think, yes? Yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And then I will describe our part of the thing, is if the bear gets into trouble, then we all charge in as if we're going to help kill the bear, but we kill the soldier and bolt. Understood. Because the bear gets stuck if he can't nice escape. It. All right. Okay. Do we want to go to our now, break in here? the process of doing all this, it's been about an hour since your characters came to make camp. I take it you've made camp at this point. You just haven't been oh, yeah, standing there for an hour amongst yourselves, right? Yeah, 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 we've been talking and making camp. All right. So you've got your, your camp set up. You've got your bedrolls laid out. You've gathered around some stones. Someone's, you know, ringed the rabbit's neck. Um, what have you done with the rabbit? I no, we, don't, our, yeah, we, don't need the, we don't need the rabbit. All right. You're anymore. just giving it to Grau to eat. Cool. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well then, we're gonna take our break right here and we're gonna come back on the other side with the inaction of the plan against the guy who's been nice and letting you take the front of the road and he's just walking. He's just walking here, but apparently off, it deserves Neil. death. Patreon.com pa Patreon. slash die. Linked in the YouTube <coughs> chat, go check it out. Buy our fucking member. dice or whatever. What are we Become selling right a goblin. now? T-shirts, dice, hoodies. We got it all. We got it all. And if you can pay big money, we'll even sell you nail. Oh yeah, his body does not quit. Nice. You Only can't for one afford night. me, baby. <laughs> Somebody out there might be able to. Well, we should, we should put a thousand euros here just to see if what happens. Yeah, a thousand euro donation. We'll see what we can do. Way higher, way higher. What do you think I am? <laughs> well, that's okay. It. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save or Die Outcasts. Growl, buddy, buddy old pal. Time to go answer the age old question. Does the bear? <laughs> well, let's see. All right, Growl's gonna get up. Um. <clears throat> ah, oh yes, oh my tummy it rumbles. Oh, it is time to go to the bathroom. I excuse myself, everyone, and I will be heading into the woods to do my business. <clears throat> um, so cool. And he uh, he will walk off until he feels mm -hmm. like he is no longer in sight. Okay. The rest of the party is at camp, rolled Growl. out in their bedrolls, getting ready to snuggle down for the night. Growl I'll is be walking first watch. here. Okay. I don't think anybody's gonna. I don't think any. I think everybody's gonna be on a watch yeah, right now. We're not going to sleep, yeah. Yeah, we're all waiting. But does well, that you guys mean you're all like... standing in no. the middle of no. your camp. No, no, no. I'm laying down. Yeah, same. Okay. But I, but I'm like, for the performance, I'm taking first watch. So I'm probably the only person still sitting up. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Grau's walking up up here north. Um. Mm, yeah, way to the north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he will... Hold on. We learned how to do this. If only I could... Wait, fuck. It was, was it, it was right-click. Boom. 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 There you go. And Growl will kind of 
sneak around. He's a he's an animal of the forest. He knows about paths and sneaking and going around. He's going all the way around here. Mm -hmm. oh. And we waited. You know, it's dark. Yeah. It's dark thirty. Um, he's got a great sense of smell. He knows exactly what is going. He's going down here, going through these trees, making sure not to get spotted. Where does he want to cross? He probably is just going to cross here. We'll be approaching. Um, okay. I've got... Okay, wait. I guess we've never talked about it. How good is my night vision? That was pretty good. Yeah. You've got... Let's see. That's not walk time yet, Luna. Um... I think it's 60 feet of dark vision. Sounds about right. 60 feet. What do I see? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so by now, you can come over here. You can see that the horse is gently tied up to a tree with a maybe six feet of line. Um, on the ground next to the horse is a bedroll that's been pulled out. And in the darkness, sometime after the skies got dark enough that no one could see the orc and the orc couldn't see anyone. Um, he appears to have laying down on a bedroll with his spear right next to him. Um, he's just got like something soft to sleep on with a, a crappy little blanket thrown over his legs and torso. Um, and he's piled a, brought a couple of nearby sticks with some leaves on it for a pillow. And um, he's got that spear right next to his body. Okay. I'm going to attempt to sneak up here. Mm -hmm. My primary target is going to be the horse. Yeah. I'm going to have to see if the horse would smell or sense or hear a bear approaching. That's you want a not stealth impossible. check? Uh, do you have... What is your stealth ability? Oh, do I need a special ability a, for that? You don't have a special ability for no. that, right? You just have a normal, I'm a bear walking up to someone. I'm just a bear. So that's going to be a surprise check for the person upon who you okay. were walking up to. Got it. Um, wow. And they have rolled a 10 on a d10, which is literally the best possible surprise Fuck. check you could roll. Uh, so I think as you're walking towards, the horse is probably like down on all on its legs, sort of, um, not quite asleep yet, but definitely in the I'm going to sleep or I've been asleep and dozing um, and something will startle and the horse will like, pick up its head. How far approaching. away am I when this happens? Uh, I think about at the log. Okay. As you're crossing the log, I think is where maybe the log shifts a little bit as you're stepping over it or there's yeah. like a crunchy thing on the other side and the horse sort of startles and goes. <laughs> Can we roll initiative? Absolutely. Okay. Genius. He would have fucked you too. Um, Ooh, is it is it just zero it initiative off. on the on the thing? Uh, no, it's gonna be three for movement or attack, whatever you're doing. Okay. Well, I'm moving first. Um, how do I, how do I make it a three? Sorry. Uh, if you click your token and yep. you click the initiative button in the upper left hand corner, you yep. should just be able to click that and add three. So we're adding three to this. Uh, or the movement one. That's perfect, too. Yeah. That is great. Uh, and the horse got a 12. So Growl is first. I think I can pull this off, guys. <clears throat> okay. I got 30 feet of movement, right? Yeah. You got way more than 30 feet of movement. Oh, yeah. I'm moving up. Boom. Mm-hmm. And um, I will attempt to... Um, I got three attacks. Yeah, you um, open up the yep. first of many attacks. I will claw. Okay, so this is combat like this is weird, right? Because I'm attempting to wound a certain part of this animal. I'm aiming for the legs here. What do you here. mean? Oh, you're specifically trying to. Name you're not it. trying to just kill the creature. You're just trying to wound it, or you're trying to yeah. disable a certain location. Be specific. Yeah. What's your yeah. goal? Yeah, I guess like. No, it doesn't really matter for the horse. If it's fucking maimed, it's fucking... I just attack it. So, claw attack. Okay. 
That's a 12. Yep. Uh, a 12 against the horse's 13 AC. E Wait, is that what the horse's AC? Horse uh, riding did he, AC Did he get a charge, Koibu? Um, did I get a charge? Were you charging? If you do, you get a penalty to your AC, uh, uh, but you get a bonus of two to attack. He moved 25 to 30 feet, I think it was. He yeah, hit the 30, but it depends if he wants to charge or not. Yeah. How is he doing? Charging I'm, try I'm, is a, you know. I'm trying to go in and wound it as fast as possible and then afterwards get away. So I, I think I'm charging in here. That does sound like a charge. All right, so yeah. you will hit with the claw. Roll me a claw damage. Four, Four damage. points of damage. And you get a separate horse token because that's the rider's HP. I will get you a horsey token. Do you get the charge on all your attacks, Quiver, or just the first one? That's a really great question. I'll check that, Neil, if you want to keep doing what you're doing. <coughs> Thank you. Well, it's going to be relevant for this next very attack, right? Possibly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Our horse has some amount of hit points, and you've just done four points of damage to it. Um, so we're going to subtract four. Maybe I can get a... Do I have a half-orc with a lance? Uh, it just says the charging character gains a plus two bonus on his attack roll. On his attack roll. roll. Not rolls. Yeah, I think it's just like... Uh, I think it's Because you charge with one attack, basically. I think yep. it's the the first blow that you strike on a charge. Okay. Yeah, it says That's characters good. and monsters can charge to rapidly close for combat and make an attack. Okay. Okay, yep. here's claw number two without the bonus. Five is a miss. And I'm going to bite the horse as well. For 19. Ooh. 19 is definitely going to be a hit. Four damage. Wait, 19 might be a crit, no? Are we playing with a crits? natural 19? It's a, it's a natural, it's 18. A natural 18. Ooh, uh, that does clear by five. So that will crit. Roll me an additional d6 plus one. Is that what bears do for damage? Or is that, do you have the, is the plus one from your high strength? It's D, it's D6 it's from your high strength. Think, right? So roll me another D6 okay. on top of that. Give me a five. Oh, four. Excellent. This is great damage. Um, I never found the orc that I wanted, so we're going to use this subpar orc. Where'd you go, buddy? This right here is our was our writer. Now oh, he's just an orc because this horse is being eaten. Excellent. So you rip into this horse, right? One claw comes in, rips it for five damage. You bite it for six. The other claw attack is a... No, I'm sorry. Your first attack is four. Your second claw is a miss. Your bite sinks into the horse's neck and like pulls out a big chunk of flesh. Yep. The horse is in a panic. Um, it will do its, its little tiny thing that it can do, but it's also tied up. So it's just going to kick at you and strain against its uh, its ropes. It is a riding horse. It has two attacks at plus three each. 1d20 plus three. Down. 16 That's will hit you for 1d2 damage. You'll take two. And another 1d20 plus three. A natural 20. The horse will kick you square in the face, and it's a critical hit for 2d2 points of damage. You'll take three and two, a total of five. I'm a 12 total. To growl. <clears throat> um, and on this next round, the orc as if looks could kill and the uh, horse wouldn't. panicked terrified desperately wanting to flee is tied to a tree i would also like to say that upon hearing this commotion um part of the plan was for us to like rush over here in case something goes wrong because like naturally yeah. right if we're hanging out we hear a bear attack we're going to go investigate right so i'm going to start moving towards this um yeah. how far can i move and what do you want me to roll for initiative just movement um, you can move 120 feet uh, and still function, or if you want to move more than that, you will take a penalty to your AC for the whole round. Uh, you can move up to 120 yards with a penalty to your AC, or you can do an attack is a half move, right? You can move 60 in strike, or you can do a full 120. I think that's right, yes. That sounds right. And then, so 16 um, attack or 120 in attack, but with a penalty to your armor class because you're running. Yeah, I'm going to move to... I've indicated the square that I want to run to. Do you think I could make it there cleanly? Absolutely. Right, perfect. Both me and Arrakis are going to have to use half of our movement okay. to get up, right? 
No, uh, second edition, you don't use half your movement to stand. Out of character. Do a whole minute. You standing up only takes a second. Sure, I'm not gonna worry about it. What is? So. Okay, out of character, right now to growl. Uh, this is meta gaming. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, let's see, we got the orc, we got the horse, we got the growl, we have the whole dang party. So first up is the half-orc, who will leap from their bedroll with that spear right next to them, um, and do the only thing that a scout will do with a spear, which is try to fend off the rather small and already head-injured bear, uh, with their spear. So we have our half orc scout who will make Watching a spear attack. A That's a hit. Uh, it's an 18. Ooh. It'll do four points of damage to you with the Ultra spear. spear. Oh, the 2d4 uh, spear shout. comes back. It's 2d4 if it's in two hands. It's 1d6 if it's in one hand. Mm. What language yeah. does he shout in? Uh, oh, an orcish. He's just shouting at the bear. Gibbering in an unintelligible language. Growl. You're at Half hit points. Give me You're a, facing a terrified and angry horse and a, a lethal spearman. Give me an image of what this horse looks like right now. Um, the horse is pulling as hard as it can, but it's it's tied by its neck to this tree, and so it's straining with its neck to pull away. It's flaring up on its back legs, and its front legs are coming and kicking out, and it's I'm, I'm more interested in place. what did, what do its wounds look like? Nasty. It's yeah. terrible. Like, this it's is not like a horse a that can, like, carry an orc. The neck. Um, yeah, yeah. Technically, it could probably carry him for a little bit, but this horse is in dire shapes, and um, the rider would be well advised not to ride this horse for a long period of time. All right, the plan was to injure the horse and maybe the orc if I can. Um, I'm fucking injured. I'm scared. I'm a bear. Um, and my instinct is not to fight to the death. My instinct is to run away, and I feel like I've accomplished what I can. Um, I'm going to use as much movement as I possibly can this turn to run away into the woods. All right. You are going to provoke an opportunity attack as you flee. Yep. Um, you are within range of the spear, and as you turn, even if I can, I take a using... disengage action. Is the thing? But then you can't use as much of your movement as possible. You'd be literally going at one third your movement speed to get away. So that's what's ten feet or that... something. You should move uh, the spearman up, by the way, Koiba. He's got reach two with his spear, so spear it's a long lance. lance. Well, this is a this is a lance that he's using okay. for horseback. It's a bigger, bigger long. Well, hold thing. on then. Did, what? Shouldn't it not do two d four because it's a lance? It does the same damage. It's just a longer, heavier spear. Okay, so explain yeah. to me if 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 it gives me if I normally provoke an opportunity attack by mm -hmm. moving normally, but disengage cancels that. But then I only get a third yes. of my movement. How does disengage gain me anything ever? Like if, um, there's, if there's somebody else in the combat. Yes. Okay. A disengage, you would get behind your allies who will guard you. Otherwise, um, you the only way yeah. to run away is to turn and run, which provokes an attack. All right, I'll, I'll take yeah. the attack opportunity then. Okay. He's got a really Half force attacks with a spear. Yeah, fuck me. That fuck is me. And it's a critical hit. Fuck me up. Do it. Yep. 44. It's a That's nine outrageous. points of damage. Oh, oh my god. Fucking yeah. Begins to run. The half orc lunges forward and pierces the bear in the back and lets out a woo, 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 woo. You uh, guys led this poor creature to its fucking death. This poor naive creature was following <laughs> your orders, was trusting you with this plan. And now it's going to cruelly fucking die at the hands of some random scout. Good job. Arrakis tried to warn us off this stupid plan. This was a great he, plan. It almost worked. He rolled a nat 20. He got, the good, the got good, two nat 20s. The giga brain really, thing to do would have been to cut the rope with a, a swipe from the bear. And make yeah. it look accidental. Mm. But you know, we can't all be high intelligence wizards. Right. Right. The horse with a natural 19 on its strength check manages to break the tie from it nice. in the tree and will scamper off. You did it. <laughs> you did it, Garb. Garb. Does, uh, Garb turn into a... Oh, yeah. Holy fuck, you guys are so far away. I'm so dead. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Garb. <laughs> Movement rate six. 
You can yes, go sir. 60 yards at full speed. That's 180 feet if you run as fast as your little frog legs will carry you. Uh, what um, about my leap here? How do we uh, feel about that? You can add 30 feet into your movement once per round. That'll do. Uh, when I hear the bear do a roar of, he's fucking dying, Koibu. I'm going mm -hmm. to... I'm so the how only far one you with a healing go? spell, by the way. Um, so I can do a 30-foot leap. You can do a 30-foot leap, and you can go 160 feet, but you'll take AC penalties while you do it. Cool. I'll do that. Um, all right, so you're going to go all the way to... up to him. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to do it right. So I'll get to here. That's 25 feet. Then I'm going to take a 30-foot leap. So I'm going to mm -hmm. get to here. And then mm -hmm. how much do I have left out of that? That's... 55 and then i got like 100 and whatever mm -hmm. okay, i can just go over this log that's cool yep, or no? that's fine yep yeah the log is not a huge impediment maybe if you're standing next to it in the middle of combat it'd be fine but i get over here over it i see the bears down yeah um, you do. i'm gonna run in front and i don't get an attack this round yeah nope cool i'll get to there and I'll move my character. All right. Next up is Renatus Fur. Uh, I am going to move to the orange dot that I indicated so that I would remember. Uh, 120. Wait, so can I move further? Dude, the crit actually. If you screwed. run, you can move further, but you will um, take AC penalties. I'm going to say something as well uh, while you run. I will say uh, <laughs> you shouldn't hurt innocent animals like that. Then I'll level my glaive at him. Oh, this is all the, going wrong. Oh, this is at the orc. Yeah. Okay, uh, the orc yeah. will wait till their turn to respond. I am going to sprint to my original location, because that's what I plan to do. Well, run. Uh, and I am thinking hard right now. Um, can I continue to move? If you move beyond this point, you take AC penalties for the rest of the round. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna move towards move. the. I'm gonna move towards the bear, as if, and I'm gonna stand over it as if I were going to try to finish him off. <laughs> and I'm gonna okay. yell, as like, you got him, nice job," as if to say, like, "You got the bear," and I'm getting like ready to take him out. Just finish mm -hmm. what you started, really. Yeah, no, it's fun. Just... <laughs> Arrakis, <laughs> it's your turn. Uh, this is revenge, you idiot, for last campaign. <laughs> We've been playing this all along. <laughs> all right, you good there? Yep. All right. You just do movement. That's it. Mm -hmm. My con initiative. <clears throat> um. Well, I guess yeah. End of the it's round. Initiative. Um, you, you've moved to stand right in front of the half-orc, right? You've come, that's like a weird thing. Like, you've ran past the unconscious bear, and you're in his grill, yeah? That's correct. You can hit me with your second attack. Neil, okay. can I see, can I see the orc? You don't have night vision, do you? Mm. He's a shadow wizard. Not yeah, yet. He doesn't have any dark vision. Not yet. Um, so I think it's sort of dim, and there's trees in the way, and whatever starlight or moonlight is there um, is probably not enough to like see over the, the six foot eight bullywug or whatever he is. Aren't you huge? Oh, I'm a big guy. I'm like. Aren't uh, you? I'm six. Oh, you're six three. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, so, like, to, but, I'd like to. I'd yeah, like to run to a anything. spot where I can see him then. On your with your movement from last round. Yeah, I'll run him rather than. Can I see him here? Yeah, that's fine. I yeah. think so. That seems pretty good. All right. Initiative. Uh, well, everyone, roll me initiative for whatever it is you're going to do. <coughs> uh, Classic. Your good rolls are done now, Koivu. Surely. <laughs> there it is. Surely nice. the scout will not 1v9. Easy. Aware. Um, Growl, will you roll me a flat d10 so we know when you take bleeding damage? Sure, buddy. Thanks. That's oh, a nine. Right. Renatus Fur, you're the first up. You can see that the Bullywug is up in the grill of the half-orc. Um, so, uh, 
an entire turn is like a minute. So I'm going to explain to you Hold what I'm going to do. Um, uh -huh. I am go I'm standing over the bear. I have my weapon in my hand. And I'm going to... Uh, if you imagine like the angle that this guy can see, the bear is probably pretty big, right? So I'm going to make as if this... And I'm, I'm going to talk while I'm doing this. I'm going to... These things are important to finish off because they can get back up if they're hurt. And I'll make it look like I'm bending down to stab the bear in the head to like cut its throat or finish it off. Uh, and then I'm trying to figure out which way did the horse run? Did it run like it this ran way? directly away? Yeah, like down south this way. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. right over here. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of sidle my way like this, like I'm like. If we're quick, we can get your horse back. And I'm going to move to here. <laughs> and I'm hoping that this guy is paying enough attention to the Bullywug that I can get behind him and attempt a mug attack. Yeah, the Bullywug has him at Glaive Point. Like, they're in a fight. Or they will be. Yeah, so the Bullywug has gotten up. And the Bullywug has his weapon in hand. And the Half-Orc has his weapon in hand. And the two of them are face-to-face. -face, and the Bullywug's like, you shouldn't kill. You shouldn't attack innocent animals. And you're like, la, la, la. I'm just going to finish this guy off. I'm going to go get your horse. <laughs> and you're kind of, you're doing your thing. But there's very clearly an altercation happening right here. But it's not between me and that guy. I feel like it's he's not, not expecting me to attack you. him, right? Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, if you, if three people ran up to you and one of them got in your grill and the other one like ran off. Uh, maybe you are a person who's used to threatening situations and you assume that all the people in a group are going to be a threat. If one of them is a threat, maybe you're a so, warrior and you have an understanding that like people going behind you while their comrades are getting in your grill is dangerous. Or maybe you're just some random dude and this is a weird bully wug and you're a human. And so the bully wugs a threat. Like there's no way to know what the guard is going to think, but let's not pretend that this is a situation where you're entirely innocuous. For sure. But am I innocuous enough to potentially get a sneak attack with a skill check you or a charisma check or something? You won't know until you attempt the attack whether or not Just he's Give him a charisma check attention. so he feels good about it. All right, sure. I, yeah. I, I, get, I'll, I, I will, We'll call for checks, but you'll, you can try it and we won't know until the end. I sneak around behind him and I'm going to attempt. It's the name of the attack. I need. To, we talked about this before the campaign and it's. I'm really excited to get my first chance to actually use it. It's yeah. called a sap. Sap. Is it a mugging attack? Let me see here. Uh, a thief can attempt to knock out a victim in certain circumstances by striking from behind with a blunt instrument. So I'm going to try to use like the blunt end of either my dagger or my arming sword or whatever you think would be reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, the target must be eligible for a backstab. Uh, mm -hmm. And I cannot mug, mug a victim that's more than twice as tall as me. And uh, the eligible thief seems to make uh, I make a mugging attack instead of a normal backstab. I get plus four backstab bonus, and they lose shield and dex bonuses. Um, yep. If helmets are detailed in the campaign, the victim has AC 10, unless the head is protected. If the thief scores a hit, the victim must make a saving throw versus petrification or fall unconscious for 2d8 rounds. Modify the saving throw by the difference in level or hit dice between the mugger and the victim. So I basically, if you let me have a sneak attack here, I have a chance to knock this guy out. So that's... Yeah, um, I just want, where, do you remember the page number that the mug is under? I can send you a screenshot. Because... Mugging is under the Thief's Handbook. Yeah. In Purple Worm, it's there. Yeah, I sent you a yeah, uh, screenshot I'm, of the rule. I have my Thief's Handbook open. It is in... Ah, here we go, page 114. I found it. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> to use this ability for this is for backstab and it follows the same rules the thief must be behind his victim and the victim must be unaware that the thief intends to attack him yep if the, an enemy sees the thief hears him approach from a blind side or is warned by another he is not caught unaware and the backstab is handled like a normal attack although bo bonuses for rear attack still applies all right, so what we're going to have you do is make a move silently check. Because oh. you have come up to this bear, and then you're like, I'm going to get your horse. And you, like, ran off like this. Um, or at least that's what it looked like you were doing. And then you came up behind him. So when you, did he hear you come up behind him or not? What is your this move is, silently check? It's 10%. I put no points into it because I'm a pickpocket. Oh. We'll go, okay, listen, well, you, I'm, I'm about to roll the five. He did see you right in front. Your, your ally is right in his grill. This is a suspicious, suspicious situation, but you can always make a 10% chance. Oh, close. close. You give me a 5% bonus for my acting? 
No. Come on. Let me roll the dice. You did roll the dice. <sighs> um, oh, and you are still wearing your armor, which is unfortunate, because if you had taken your armor off, you would have had a bonus and passed. What yeah. armor? The leather I, I was, armor that you still have, you're on watch. I have no armor on. You were on watch. You were on watch. You're on watch. What do you mean? It's only equipped on, on my character sheet. It's unequipped. I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it is. Look, I just don't uh, So you do a regular attack? <laughs> you come up behind him. You're going to do this thing, but he seems to be aware enough of it coming along, so I don't know what it's going to do. I think it's just, is it an auto fail if they're aware? I think it's just, you don't it, get the backstab, um, but it's just a regular attack. But yeah, you I get think like the becomes, rear attack. Yeah, it yeah, just becomes yeah. a regular strike. Go ahead and make it's, a regular strike. Basically, a mug attack is where I get to change the backstab or sneak attack into a mm -hmm. uh, knockout. Yeah, so you've got your dagger and you're about to like bang him over the head and then he like turns his head at the last moment and you switch the grip on your dagger and you plunge it down onto him. Absolutely. Uh, you'll still get the plus two for hitting him from behind. So, boom. And he's got AC 10 and it's oh. a critical hit. Roll me 2d4. Oh, give me that seven damage to the dome. Beautiful. You cut deeply into the scout's shoulder. He lets out a cry of pain. Arrakis will take a turn. Uh, yeah, I reach into a bag at my side, uh, flipping the buckle open and mm -hmm. pulling out uh, from a pouch a few rose petals. I crush them up between my fingers, mutter some magic words, and cast sleep on Wrong the uh, orc over here. Now, I've since questioned my Ooh. definition of sleep, and I wonder if this actually does affect others. It will. It does not distinguish friend from foe. Yeah. It affects okay. creatures, and it starts with the lowest hit dice first. So roll me 2d4, and we'll start with the lowest hit dice, and we'll and move before from there. The so I, I try to avoid <clears throat> one of the two party members. So I sure. try and position the spell so I only hit, like, yeah. like the Yeah, you can do a order. square like that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Eight hit die. Excellent. You will knock out two people. They will instantly fall asleep. I then spend my movement uh, to walk 60 feet over to these guys. Excellent. And so, Growl well, loses that went a about as point. well as expected. Leave Why don't you uh, kill the orc and I'll save the bear? Sure. Uh, I use my next action to finish off the orc. Done. Oh, wait. Hold on. It's done. Damn. Okay, I did it. Coup de gras. I kill him. Give me that XP. I and search. I rifle face. through. Wait, before I kill him, I search his pockets and I loot. <laughs> you still. <Gold. laughs> you can search the pockets after you're dead. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no. Um. Uh, and you will stabilize the bear. I will assist in stabilizing the bear with, with the rockets, Excellent. whatever it needs to be Do done. you wake me up? Oh, yeah. yeah that I means I am at minus two right now. Yep. yep. Yes. Okay. Um, as we're at the bear, I say, let me search the orc. And I'll take a step back once the bear is stable. Uh, I, I have already searched the orc, actually. I am the rogue of this party. I look at you. I have what did you fingers. find? What do I find, Koibu? Let me send it to me in a Let DM. Don't tell the party. Okay? Okay. This is my info. I, I, I want to know if, he's, if he finds like a note or something. Mm. I go after the horse. I, sorry, I kick Garp awake. Um, yeah, you keep Garp awake. Garp, you're going to go try horse? and chase down the horse. It's fucking bolted into the night. It's dark. You have no idea where it's gone. It could be anywhere. It's a forest. And it's, fine. And it's dark. And the horse is gone. The horse survived a bear attack. When uh, Growl wakes up, we need to make it look like this guy was killed by a bear. Mm -hmm. We also need to hide... Well, we need to hide the body, maybe. Uh, and we need to... Uh, would I be aware yes. of Secret Dead? I uh, don't know how to tell this to you, but this bear is not waking up anytime soon. Um, do we have any healing items or things? No. No. Hmm. You are stuck in this place for multiple days. <clears throat> how heavy nursing is the this bear, bear back to health? Hundreds how of pounds. How heavy is that bear? Well, no, it matters. It's heavy. Between the three of us, can we move the bear deeper? Not with the cart, I would imagine. What type of bear are you, Growl? I'm a glacier Black bear. bear. Which is a oh. uh, subspecies of American black bear, yeah. But sorry, See. before we get into dragging the bear, uh -huh. Renatus, what did you find on it? I oh yeah, what did I find? Let's get that. Let's order ah, operations. Right. Okay. Where is the potato in Discord? There it is. Look at that face. I might not tell you what I find. I'm asking you directly. 
Well, I gotta wait till I know. And I'm watching you as well. I'm looking for a note well, on you're, orders or you're something. You're tending to to the bear, right? You're bandaging you're up the bear as he's digging through the body. I thought I thought you said you were helping me before you searched him. Oh, I, I think he search. he said three things in quick succession. I kill him, I search him, and I help you. Yeah. And he cannot do all of those, but I'm going to take them in the order he said them. <laughs> uh, Thank you for base. ruling in my favor. <laughs> uh, I will I'm tell impartial. you what's going on here. It just, just happens wanted... to be... Yeah, but I don't. If he's got orders, I want to read them first. I don't want you to read. I don't want. I don't want you to read them and find out why they're looking for me. Well, then it oh. sounds like you should stop bandaging the bear as soon as you see him. Yeah, tending. I think that is so probably gonna, what I do. So you're gonna leave the bear to continue to bleed out while he searches. Well, no. The bear. I mean, I'm kneeling at the bear. I'm looking over uh -huh. my shoulder as he's rifling through his belongings, and I say to him, "What are you? What's there? What has he got?" Well, don't this worry. Is, it's uh, too dark. There's no way he could read a letter without I firelight. I haven't found it yet. You know? I said, have you helped? Uh, have you have you saved the bear? We need we need that bear. You need that bear. <laughs> I'm saving his life, just like I saved yours. I had it handled. No, oh, I meant in the swamp with the bullywogs, Renatus. You were bleeding Renatus, out. Renatus, Renatus smirks and says, "I had it handled." <laughs> <laughs> Knowing he's completely talking bullshit. <laughs> uh, I, under my breath, I mutter, "Fucking jokers." <laughs> a black bear only weighs 180 to 250 pounds. I think we've. My, I am Rachel 160 pounds. 300. You're a little baby bear. Sheet. Oh wait, oh, that's probably my glacial... human form. That's your human yeah. form. Yeah. Wait, the glacial bear weighs between 300 and 600 pounds is what my Google told yeah, if me. You're, yeah, if you're a glacial, glacial bear, bear, that means you live in snowy parts, which means you're a fucking bear. Oh, I was typing glacier bear, and then the black bear came up. So. Yeah, no, that's, like, that's correct. Arctic animals are big. Have you ever seen an Arctic hare, dude? It's like he's a not like dude. He's not like in the Arctic. They live on like the coast of like Canada. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. What's the guy Wait, got on it? Get... Oh, yeah. I'm typing it to him. Hold on. It takes a moment. <laughs> Oh my god, he is typing it. You little I'm typing. I told him to type it. It's more fun if I get to roleplay the revealing of the information. <laughs> True. True. We're just here to roleplay, Nick. <laughs> Don't save the bear next time. Be a loot goblin. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a loot goblin. I'm not gonna screw your character here, Nick, by revealing information. I can't no, even that's read the fine, note. Uh, but my character just doesn't want you to know it. And he's paranoid yeah. about other people reading Knowing. it. Okay. Yeah. Character's a paranoid fuck. Yeah. Your paranoia scares me. What did you do? Well, your lack of ability to construct a plan scares me. Uh, the plan <laughs> His plan was, was good. Perfect. <laughs> he got oh, unlucky. Yeah. yeah, it worked out perfectly. All right, I pocket. So you see me as I'm as I'm rifling through this guy's stuff, and I'm checking mm -hmm. him. He's bleeding. There's blood all over things. And as you're tending to the bear, you hear me rustle around, and you hear me pick up a, a small coin sack. Mm -hmm. I pick it up. And you hear me fill, refill my own coin sack with it. And I kind of take the other coin sack and fold it up and throw it in my pack so as to not leave yeah. much evidence behind. Well, if that's obvious, then I will say over my shoulder, you can keep the coins, but if he's got orders, I want to see them. Yeah, sure thing. And as I continue to rifle, uh, you hear me pull out a dagger and put it into one of my sheets. Because remember, I threw my dagger away earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, one yeah. of my daggers away. So I got a new one. Um, uh, so now I have an extra dagger. Um... I'm, as I'm rifling through the pack, you see me kind of toss a bit of food from one of his rations. Um, and I also toss a water skin. Um, you see me kind of like look at his hand for a minute um, and try to pull off some rings, but they kind of seem difficult to get off. So I like I leave them there. Uh, and then I'm like patting him down. And he has like this sack, like a messenger sack um, that held the food and water. And I rifle through there to see if there's any paper. And what do I find? Do I find paper, Koibu? I'll DM you what you find. Um, I, I find no for... papers. I find nothing. And uh, you see me like basically take the messenger sack and do this. You know, the, like how people will empty out a backpack yeah. by like doing that. Um, I'm just going to roll a slide of hand check real quick. Is the horse's saddle over here? Uh, the horse's saddle is on the ground nearby. Absolutely. I'll check the saddle. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Don't worry about the pickpockets check, okay? I didn't even see you roll it. I don't see it roll it. Oh, it'll it'll come. <clears throat> um, wait, where's my thief things? Boom. 
Oh, yeah. You don't see me grab what it is. <laughs> you probably didn't even <laughs> grab anything. <laughs> um, I'll check the horse's uh, saddle. Anything? I'm DMing you. Oh, you don't have to DM me. You can just tell me. Uh, you find a set of manacles. They're like, you know, 15 pounds. They're super fucking heavy. They're like wrought iron, big old things <clears throat> with a little chain in between them. Um, and there's a there's a key somewhere in that sack as well. I'll kind uh, of pull old... it out and mm -hmm. hold it to a rock and be like, look, I think he was coming for you. I and told you. It over to you. He's got to have a note. I keep saving. I... Yeah. Uh, you find no note, but you will find... Uh, well, I guess the rope was already used to tie the horse up. There's, um, well, the horse's blanket is already knocked on the ground. Um, there's another water skin in there, but that's about it. I'll take that water skin. Mm -hmm. I added to my bandolier. I now have seven water skins. Excellent. Huge. <clears throat> right. Well, it's a bit strange for a scout to be carrying around manacles, but it's also weird mm -hmm. for if he was looking up, looking for me that he wouldn't have a description. Hmm. Did you Do scouts typically anything? carry manacles? I just tell them. Uh, I, I recount what I found. I found some gold. I found some food. I put the I put the rations. I take the extra water skin. I take the the muddy pouch. Um, I leave the silver rings because, well, how valuable do they look? Worth a couple of silver each. Oh, I swipe them. Maybe more. I swipe them. Yeah, Give me those silver rings. That's, that's right. I want the okay. I'm gonna these keep the manacle and the lock. I think this could actually be useful. I so. Will, uh, Put it in my backpack. Speaking to the party. Well, we find ourselves in a right mess now. Karao's not going to wake up for a few days at least. Mm. What's the plan well, here? We can't pull the cart and the bear between the three of us. No, we What's can't. We should probably move this body and get it to the swamp where it won't be found. <laughs> um, yes. We need to... Hmm. Priority number one. We need to bring this body to somewhere where we can report it that he was attacked by a bear and we couldn't save him. Uh, what about these? And I point to the dagger mark in the back of his... Yeah, his throat's been cut. And his slit throat. Uh, we can get... When we get Growl back up, he can give him a nice bite and figure it out. Um, but we also <clears throat> need to make sure that they can't speak with dead with the body, so we need to be slow in making our way, which will be helpful because we need to get that bear healed. I need to get that bear moved. Um, so what I su suggest is between oh, the please, three of do, us... Do tell us your suggestion, Renesis. Listen, your plan was to walk up and use sleep on a man who is already asleep, okay? Yes. My plan and... worked perfectly until this bear somehow managed to get himself killed by a spear. Listen here. If we can get the bear in the cart, I think I can pull it. I think the cart will even... The cart should be fine. Cart yes, You're not going to sure. fit the bear sure the, and the glass in the cart. I'm sure all the delicate alchemical equipment will be just fine with a Yes, bear which is why we're going to, to take the glass out and stash mm. it. The most no. important thing part right now is getting this body, I point to the body, and that bear to the swamp. Arrakis, you can probably hide in the woods for a day with the glass. Mm. I'm sorry, but Grau was nice and all. But why don't we just leave him here with the orc and take the glass back to Fuck autumn? Fuck you. you! And with that, let's go to our final shit. break. Let's do it. Let's oh see you guys on the God. other side. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save or Die. Growl left in the woods to die. The party moves on <laughs> towards the swamp. <laughs> no, no not quite. All right, so Garp will speak up. All right, here's what we're going to do. Old man, you're going to help me move the bear further into the woods. Arrakis, you need to drag that body or pick it up over your shoulder and bring it with you. We'll come and we'll, we'll retrieve the cart. And then we're going to camp there for a few days until this, and I kick the bear, fucking thing wakes up. Let's hide this body 10 feet under and move on with our ways. We've accomplished our plan. I can't carry that orc. I can watch the cart. You can move the bear, then you can come back for the orc, and then I'll follow you with the cart. You can drag the orc, I say. Surely. We can't drag the orc, because I'm not be leaving a blood trail. The glassware, sitting randomly alone in the forest. I'm just not doing it. 
It's fine. It's fine. You're very focused Garble. on the mission. Well, yes, that is what we're getting paid for. Garble leaned The mission down, right now is to survive. And I would think that someone orc. with your <clears throat> paranoia... And I'll kind of fumble in my pocket. <clears throat> like, because I'm fucking with you as if I have a note um, yes, well, that I found. Uh, I'll be honest, Renatus. The most dangerous thing to my survival right now, I think, is hanging out with the group of you right here. My cover has been... Mm. Perfect for months on end now. And look at us now. We've got a dead body. We've got a downed party member. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're days away from anywhere safe. This is the most dangerous situation I've been in since the incident. Renata is getting a little bit annoyed with Arrakis. So he, he starts going, and how has that covered worked out for you, Arrakis? How have you found yourself in a band of misfits in the middle of a forest, carrying some glassware with a dead orc scout at your feet, a mauled horse, and a bear. Enough arguing, you two. On the edge of death. We need to move these things. Your plan things has been going where... very well. How many spells do you know? You look like a very accomplished wizard. You look like you're you doing know, great on your own. You're doing great you on your own. You know exactly how the I've ended up in this situation, Renatus, because you're responsible for it. So Ren, no, Arrakis. How did you? How did you, how did you? How did you get here? How was, Garp will how go over to Ren and kind of like push him. through Autumn's swamp, and I, I will push him back. I will say, Oops, young swamp hopper, do not push me. We're not I am here to unmovable. argue with him. <laughs> We need to move away from the road, and we need to accomplish the task. You can argue with him later in the camp. Sometimes Listen children... to your friend, I Renatus. turn to Arrakis, and I say, sometimes children need a lecture. You're picking a fight you can't win, old man. I will pick up the body, Koivu. I will first bandage it, so that blood isn't fucking leaking everywhere you as I bear? walk. I take the no, ferret, or the orc. The orc. I, and I, I run it along my arm, I, and the ferret stands up, and I poke him in the back, and he falls back forward. <sighs> And I just say, nice. you don't have eyes on the back of your head, Arrakis. <laughs> um, I will use cloth, Scarlet, yeah. not proper bandages, Koivu, so probably mm -hmm. the orc's clothing. Mm -hmm. um, bandage him up as best as I can so that blood isn't just going everywhere. Pick mm -hmm. him up, and I will retreat into the forest with said body. Um, All right. Yeah. It's a, a slow move to yeah. haul the orc, but you can do You've got 17 strength. You <clears throat> fireman lift the orc and kind of... <clears throat> Yeah. You're While waiting. he's doing that, I'm going to quickly scout around um, and see if there's any other camps nearby that have been like awoken by this commotion. I, I stay by the bar. I keep an eye on Renatus. Make sure he doesn't get behind me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. I go 15 minutes into the forest. Drop 15 the body off. minutes of slow walking with the yeah. body, right? So it'll Correct. take you like two minutes to get back. Okay. Um. Well, then I'll go 30 minutes in and then. All right. So you're. Minutes to get back. I, I want to go a ways in the forest. And You're I wanna... gonna go well yeah. off the road then, okay? Correct. Yeah, I. You head into the back. woods. Uh, you drop the body at a spot. You mm -hmm. bandage it so it's not bleeding on you. It's not bleeding on the ground. It's not leaving a blood trail. Um, it'll be a, a slow walk back to this area. There's no light. Um, there's no camp light to really lead you. You can find your way because you're not that far into the woods, but venturing into the woods at night always carries um, an <clears throat> element of danger. If you ever get gonna... turned around, and even if you're just like a few degrees off, you can find yourself um, lost in the woods at night. It's a thing. We don't have it in the it modern is. era because we've got like GPS and we've got flashlights and who goes in the woods anyway. Um, but... The old man would have taught me to do this, so I'm going to use my glaive and I'm going to like hit a notch in a tree every once in a while so I can like find my way back. Mm -hmm. um, I I'll leave a trail that I will know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I come back okay. to camp and I'm going to say, Arrakis, can mm -hmm. you please remove the glasswork carefully so that From I may go? That's correct. So that I may go and put the bear in the cart and bring him to the spot. Okay. In the middle of the night, this is going to be a difficult thing. The glass is delicate. You're, it's dark. Well, the, the, there's, the hang there's on, hang on, tree hang on. There's cover. The, there's the dying embers of the orc's fire. Orc never I have made a tinderbox. Fire. I can make you a can fire. make a fire if you want, but even if you do, that's going to be at ground level and it's going to be shielding the cart. Oh, like, sorry. Moving, I have candles. Moving glassware in the dark is going to be difficult. And if you are not wanting to break anything, what, what I'm trying to say is if you're going to unpack the cart here at night, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you to make a check or break something. Wait, um, um, it's going to happen. 
You, we can right. modify the check we... by trying okay. to get better lighting, but if it's I feel be I a can't, check. if if I, okay, I can't. I, I say, I don't think I can take the glassware out safely in the dark like this. Not in the middle of the forest. It's not safe. There's no. Not even under my candlelight. I pull out three candles. The light's refracting from the glass. It's playing shadows everywhere. It's too risky. Why do um, you need the car? Can't you just drag the bear? I I, know. I yeah I I look at the bear and I'm. I'm like, I thought you left to go the three scout of us out together. other nearby camps. Oh, I'm like, I, I'm nearby, but when I see them come back, I'm like, I'm not too far. Okay, I'm just you're like not that thing. far. You're just kind of going for a little stroll. So if I see them come back, I come back and I'm chatting. Um, my question, I turn to them and I say, surely between the three of us and some rope, we can drag this bear at least away from the road until we have time to figure things out. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, that's fine. Arrakis, okay. can you pull the cart and then me and Ren should be able to drag the bear? I can indeed. Okay. Um, I will meet up over here. Now. We will then go to my spot in the forest, dragging the bear. All right. So Renatus Fur and Arrakis both have 10 strength. Mm -hmm. I have 17. Um, you have 17. So I think as you, you go to do these things, and Arrakis, you're finding that pulling the cart on the uneven just forest floor is a huge pain in the ass. Really? Um, and it's bumpy. Yeah, because there's roots and there's rocks and it's not an even surface and you've got 10 strength and it's, you know, a couple hundred pounds in in a wagon. You could do it, but it's going to be like a... It's going to be a, a jostling, bumpy bit. Well, um, no, I think... Well, we're, we're dealing with lots of weight, lots of gear and yeah, yeah, uneven I, surfaces. Sorry, but I guess like uneven surface, brute forcing it is not the way to do it. I don't think strength is what you're looking for here. You're looking for patience. And taking to pull it slow the bear? and making... No, no, no to the pull cart. the cart with the glass. Mm. Right. Because, like, if if a 17 strength person was pulling it, is using all of their strength, the glass is going to smash. It's not about strength. It's about patience. And I just take my time and do it properly. I think okay. that's fair. Um, sounds good. Yeah, this isn't a speed thing. This is about getting it done right. And Arrakis is actually the perfect person for the job. Yeah, and I feel like if I'm at a position where there's like a huge route and I can't find a way over it, I'll Let's wait the cart. and call the party to help me like lift it over the route. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. And then between Garp and Renatus, the two of you are going to want to move the bear. Bear weighs a few hundred pounds is what we, we found. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's a bear. Yes. I can do a max pull of myself of 200, or my max press is mm -hmm. 220. Right, and well, that's how forget, much you can lift above your That's head, how much you can right? go above, yeah. So it's a lot yeah. easier. I could probably pull this bear on my own. Right. If you were to just drag the bear, if it was a dead bear, I think you could drag him without any worry. Mm. But since it's a wounded bear that you, who you're trying to keep from having bleed out on you. You're going to yeah. also have to be very careful. The two of you together, how would one, like he's got some pretty nasty spear wounds that have been lightly bandaged by the wizard, uh, enough that they're not bleeding anymore. So I would take the uh, long spear um, mm -hmm. and I would tie a piece of rope around <clears throat> the end of it and then I would insert it underneath the bear and kind of loop it around him a couple of times, basically building like a rope harness so that the bear can mm. be pulled with the, the force of being pulled evenly distributed. And then we also while... have the horse's blanket. Yeah. And yeah, then do you, while... Does anyone have rope? Oh, shit. You always have rope in D&D, &D, right? I don't know. Did you pack it? I, I do not have rope. I don't have it on my character sheet. No Surely... one packs rope. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Tia who There's will have rope. rope, though. Surely the There's... orcs got rope. There's some broken rope on the tree. Um, it's not enough to wrap multiple times around a bear. It's enough to tie a horse up. It's a what do you call it? A um, like a like a loop. Yeah, it's just the like a lead. It's like two hundred pounds. It's scrap, lead. Just scrap a poor each and drag him. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I mean, I'll put I'll put the the um, if you drag a paw each. If you grab a paw each and just drag the bear through the woods, you're gonna do damage to the like no. dying. Well, no, we're gonna drag to him. On. To, we're gonna drag him onto the blanket, which should reduce his the friction blanket. with yeah. the ground, and lower the chance that something will bump and hurt him. If you're Even trying to, if the bear is wounded and you're trying to keep him safe, dragging him through the woods is more likely to cause harm than it is to keep him safe, right? So I, I just want to let us. I want to talk that we're you're in a dire situation. You want to get out of sight, 
but getting out of sight is going to come at liability for things, especially in the dark, especially when you can't see what the fuck is going on, right? Well, We're in like the, the literally worst situation to try and move a wounded bear and a cart full of glass. Like I can't, I can hardly imagine a worse time to do this unless we're on a mountain, <laughs> right? Like this is the this is the confluence of terrible. Um, Can we get a weather check, actually, Koi Bill? We... All right, you know listen, what? Okay. We'll be a two d eight there, Growl. Maybe it's gonna rain. All right. Ch change of. I see them struggling with the bear. I'm also struggling with the cart. It's fine. All right. Mm -hmm. Shout out, Gop. Why not just keep the camp here for the night and do this in the morning? I know. Sure. We can do that. Yeah. Okay. It is a bit of a shit show, especially in the dark. Yeah. We're gonna wait till morning. So we put the we put we do drag the bear a little bit to get him behind a tree, at yeah. least. Yeah, we drag him a few mm -hmm. feet, like very carefully over the course of like twenty minutes or something. With the three of you working together, roll the bear, shift the bear, shift the bear, shift, roll, shift. Um, you can get him a few feet. Um, but it's it's very slow, awkward going in the night. Can you move him over here? Uh, yeah, we can move him over here. That's fine. All right. And uh, the orc, we moved way off into the woods. Gone. That's not a big yep. problem. Because we don't care if the orc's body gets injured, right? You can you can break his neck again, and it's fine. Yeah, we don't care. Um, the goal is to have and... Grau, when he comes back alive, he should actually just eat the orcs. Okay. Uh, at least and, his uh, head. Arrakis. He's a bear, true. Yes. We have the, the orc body in one spot, and we've got the cart in another spot. And they're mm -hmm. 80 feet apart, 85 feet apart. That's not a great distance. It's pretty close. Where we are we camping? Here. You want to bring the cart um, over here? Yeah, yeah I guess cart so. Cart in the same yeah. spot as us. Cool. All right. We are well into the night now that the, camp, the party, surviving party, finally gets to make a rest. By the time the sun comes up, um, no one will have gained enough of a rest to memorize spells or gain HP or any possible resources back. You're all going to be tired. It's been a shitty, shitty night and no one got any good sleep, but you can hear the roosters crowing in the distance. There must be a village or a farm nearby. You can see the golden light of sun reflecting off the branches of leaves and you could come into the nice warm air of the new day. And it's lovely. If it wasn't for the dying bear next to you, it would be such a lovely day. Don't forget the dying orc or the dead orc. Hey, he's minutes into the woods. <clears throat> Can't even smell him. Wait, sorry. Okay, did we not bring to... the... so wait, 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 wait. Did we... Chop, did chop, we... guys. Did let's we... get going. Oh. Did we not bring the orc's body back? Are we just leaving it in the woods for anyone to find? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. You wake uh... up. There's some like little sunbeams. There's some little creatures hopping about. You see some bunnies. Maybe that's like a pixie or a fairy or a sprite, or maybe it's just like a mode of dust moving around. There's some butterflies, some moths, robins hopping down and pulling worms out of the ground. Oh, what a lovely day. All right, let's get moving. We take I, the stuff I, off I, the I, I get, wait, wait, why not just move the cart into the woods? Because you want to move the bear on the cart. I want to move the bear on the cart. Okay, okay, yeah. I start and should we, the cart then should, carefully now. I use right my bad roll. Should we move gonna... the cart into the woods first, then take the stuff yeah, off, let's then move the cart back? You're, you're like, we're, we're jumping the gun here. You're right, me. yeah. I agree. <laughs> we should move the cart with the shit in the woods, put it near the body, and then bring the cart back, and then move the bear. I cover the bear with a blanket in case anyone comes by. Got Good. it. So we're going to haul the cart off the beaten trail, unload all of the goods just onto the ground in the woods. Withdraw. And Kev. then bring it. And local to, I mean, it's a forest. Sure. There's got to be some leaves on the ground. What, what season is it? Have the trees begun to fall? Um, or the leaves? I was just looking up. It's going to go right back in the cart. We just got to move the fucking bear. Yeah. Simple operation. Simple. See, quick adventure. Five minutes. In and out. It's fine. I'll, I'll even give you a dex check, right? For the glass. Do I break one? Uh, no, well, in the daytime with the three of you, there's no worry about breaking it. And with the three of you helping to move the cart, you can gently move it over the uneven terrain. You've got plenty of light and it's not a problem. You get it off into the woods. You can unload the glass here. It's packed with straw. So, you know, you can pull the straw out and set it down. You can build a pile of glassware in the woods. Now, the only question, you know, this thing, you, you can pile it in such a way that it's not going to fall on its own. 
But if a deer walks through yeah, and well, steps I stay on next it, time. Like... I don't. No, 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 no. They're it's moving the Such better. a simple question. I take man. the glass off the cart. <laughs> it's so and I... straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> and then I stay next to it until such a time as I can put it back in the cart. Got it. So You're any animals that come near me, I will make sure that they don't come near me. Yeah. Easy. You can easily guard the glass from woodland creatures. That is well within mm -hmm. your powers as a shadow mage. Okay. Done. Sold. Is that an official the other power two... of the shadow mage? It is. Okay. The other two of you, you're going to put the bear in the cart. That's right. Oh, yeah. and I think between the two of you, um, you can do it. I'm going to want a strength check from both of you because at some point you're going to have to brute force the bear up into the cart. Natural 20. Um, did you really 20 that? I got a 17. Oh my god, Ooh. never mind. He leaps Ignore... in the air with the bear in the I do it myself, actually. <laughs> it's fine. The bear's in the cart. He almost gains HP because of the skill <laughs> with which you place him in the cart. It's beautiful. Um, and it's done faster than anyone You've never would have seen imagined. a frog and an old man work so well together at in fact, picking up a bear. You're also wondering why you just didn't do it last night. It was so easy. Why, why didn't you just do it in the middle of the night? Sure, um, because the cart was full. Full of glass, Sorry. that's why. Sorry. What are you gonna do with the bear now? What are you gonna do with the cart? What do you got? I bring the fucking bear and the cart and the old man to the woods, to the spot where the dead body is. Uh, Has anyone gonna touched the body? The um, Footsteps, anything like that? I creatures. look for my markings to find it. Yeah, you can easily refind it, not a problem. You get to the body and it's just chilling there, just as you left it the night before. Not a Good. mark. I okay. get to dig in. With what? Wait, my everything. Wait, you, wait, wait, wait. You're a frogman. You can't dig in the dirt. True. You don't have a well, shovel. On, hey, now I need to look at bully wigs. We got once knives. the once the bear knives is are out. shitty digging tools. If you want to make a hole big enough to bury a body, you need a shovel. My, so here's the thing: Do we even need to bury the body? We just no. need it because when the bear wakes up, we just get him to maul yes, the body. That's the plan. Maybe yeah, destroy yeah, the yeah, head yeah. enough to where yeah. Secret Dead won't work. I, I assume the secret dead work on headless bodies. Um, you just need a part of the creature. What just is... have the bear eat right? him. It's a fucking bear. He's not a human. He's actually a bear, and we need to remember that. The Once they still have a mouth and can't be undead. Oh, that might be five e. Once the bear is out of the cart, I carefully put the glass back in the cart. Packing it with the hay to make sure that it's fine. Smart. For Speak with Dead, if I recall correctly, you only need a piece. Yes. Yep. I, think that really? is I, I think it's really dumb, but yeah. I prefer the 5e rules where it's still like the corpse still has to have a mouth. I think that so. makes more sense. I think that makes more sense too. Do you want to swap that over? You need cast a spell upon a body, remains, or portion thereof. Um, so, I don't know. Um. I'm not going to make such a, a hugely influential decision on the fly. Yeah. I've yeah. I've done that before. And, um... <laughs> Here's the thing. If, if he rules this in this way, that could also screw us later. So, You know, I think that it's actually probably fine because... We speak don't have with a cleric here. We wouldn't know. You, you, yeah, that and Speak with Dead also requires like really high-level casters if it's over like a week. Like you have yeah. to really? seventh or eighth level, which doesn't yeah. really—that's really rough. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and, and, and I think you're, call you're up a, like, talking a to the spirit color. more than you're talking to the flesh, so you don't yep. need the. Okay, it's more like speak with ghost rather than speak with corpse. Yeah, yes. by the book, they thought. Okay, of it. I take okay. out my dagger and I shave grouse legs. <laughs> <laughs> Classic <laughs> meme. Five no, bear. hours no, later. <laughs> yeah, I don't really. <laughs> Um, um, so you're, what are you going to do now? You've got the, the bear and the, the treasure and the dead body and they're all in the woods. We need to rest. Um, I need to rest, rest, but you're also going to need rations because you've, you, what we do so far on this journey is that you buy some food as you stop in villages along the way and you're not carrying like 30 yeah. pounds of food. You're just so buying as you go. We so send, someone needs to make a, a run. Yeah, we send Renesis to the nearest village to get food. Correct. Russians. Yeah, I will make my yeah. way. I'm the most roguey. I'm the most stealthy. I have wilderness survival. I have swamp survival. Um, I am the most stealthy, which doesn't say much because I have a 10% chance to move. 
<laughs> I need to start putting <laughs> points into that. I went full pickpocket and then we spent the day in the wilderness. What can I say? Um, mm. So, yeah, I'm going to make my way down the road to a local village. Okay. Not a problem. Hours later, you come across a local village. Did you take any money? Do you have any money on your character? Yes, I have. I've been kind of keeping track on the side because I have to transfer what I have from our live session. So let me do that right now. With a little I bit sent of, everyone their character sheet. Uh, a little bit of clicking and stuff. Um, so at the live session, I had two GP, two SP, and 46 copper i spent 15 copper so i'm down to 31 i spent two silvers that's all my silver gone mm -hmm. then from the character we killed i got 13 silver and 18 copper which brings me back up to 49 copper so i have two gold 13 silver and 49 copper i'm going to transfer that into my character sheet that is what i am carrying great um, so you walk down the road, and you come across the village of Gilmheld. It's a small little village along the road. It's got a little sign. It's somewhat crooked. It's got an arrow pointing towards the town that says Gilmheld. Um, and it's just an ordinary little village. You've passed this on your way here. Nothing really to say about it. Um, you can walk on in. You can look about. You can buy some fresh produce from the farmer's market that's going on. Um, and then you can turn around and head right back out, if that's the plan. Yeah, that's totally what the plan should be but i just i have that little bit of chaos in me um i <laughs> play the character I... baby <laughs> <clears throat> i really should just i i should be wiser than this but you're not um, but the character's what? supposed to be let me let, let me think about this let me think about this do i try to perform and pickpocket someone or do i focus on the mission <laughs> Do a wisdom check. All right, listen. We're we're wisdom checking it. We're wisdom in it. All right, listen. I'm. I I am tempted to play my role, and I realize that this is a slightly more serious situation than I would normally be in with the bullywug. Because this is what I would do when I go to town. Right? I put on a little show for people. I buy a little bit of food. I go back to the bullywug. We hang out in the swamp. He gets fed. We make a little bit of money from performing. Um, so rather than pickpocketing, I will do. I will like entertain, you know, shopkeepers with the ferret running from my shoulders if they're into it to try and get like a discount on a little bit of food. Maybe make a couple of coppers from kids being like, if you have a copper, he'll do a trick kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. but mostly I'm focused on picking up the food while I'm at the market. Okay, cool. Roll me a 1d20 for your luck in busking in the market. It's average. It's it's average. And in this podunk village, you know, it's not a wealthy place. It's a happy place, but there's not a lot of money to go around. You're still going to spend way more than you earn. Um, you're getting food for three people for how many days? I think we had agreed that it would be at least three days, and I can always come back. Right. You can always come back. So we're going to say you're buying fresh produce, like, you know, some carrots some bread oh i'm getting taters i'm getting turnips i'm getting yeah i'm well, making you, vegetables if you have potatoes soup. you're gonna have to cook potatoes like you know you can't just eat those suckers raw you don't have a pot to make soup you don't have oh. any cooking supplies you you need to be buying like things that your party can eat we can cook potatoes oh, you have a skillet I you have got a, a skillet. skillet yeah Fuck, i'm, I'm no, buying dude, i'm buy buying the good stuff then. too I'm, I'm i'm looking for a water skin full of cream uh i want to get like a knob of butter we're gonna be living large in this in this area, okay? Oh, nice. Maybe the smell of the food will wake the bear up. This is oh, why it you will. Bring a skillet, guys. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just eating carrots and raw onions. Koibu was like, "The skillet's gonna weigh ten pounds. Do you really want it?" Yes. Okay, good job. <laughs> and All I right. oh, I wanted to say for one more time, I picked up the manacle and key, and I added it to my character sheet. I added all Excellent. fifteen pounds. Excellent. It's a uh, nine silver for food for three people for three days. Okay. Uh, including, you know, tab of butter and all that jazz. And while I'm here, so it's nine silver, can I get my copper converted to silver while I'm in town? It's like trade, trade, um, trade all over, be like, hey, while I'm doing this transaction, can you give me, like, I use my copper instead of, wait, how much copper for a silver? Ten. Yeah, so I'll yeah, trade in five silver and 40 copper. 
because I'm just that kind of guy to save weight. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Because um, similarly to you, no one likes to carry around large sacks of copper. And so if you're going to do money exchanging, people are usually going to charge you at least 10% because they can and you'll pay it. Surely businesses would want change copper. Occasionally, but I think you, oftentimes they have a lot. Depends on what sort of business you're in and what sort of a con area. But yeah. A town like this, there's probably a lot of copper being handed around. Yeah. I would say a tavern that's charging five copper for a drink is going to be needing a lot of copper to give change to people who pay with one silver. Mm. True. That's true. Yep. Taverns might be able to make change for you. But uh, I think a lot of other places are going to be trying to make a little money off you. And that price, well, did you factor yet. in how much money I'd made Thank from you. performing? Yes. That was, okay. that was the discount. discount. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I I spent like a little bit of time just like getting local news. Like I'll I'll talk to the shopkeepers. So, like if there's any rumors of stuff going on in the nearby areas. There's I'd a like scout to... missing. <laughs> <laughs> we were expecting a scout today, and he is he hasn't showed up. <laughs> he was well, escorting some friendly people. I um, actually wanted to help him. Can I get a rumor check? Any rumors? Roll me 2d10. Oh, absolutely. What do you want? Do you want higher low? He needs to know. It's, it's a surprise. A, it's important man. before I hit enter. <laughs> These are the two independent d10s. Oh, okay. They are not, their sums are not being taken. Nine nice. and six. Mm. Almost. Well, the first thing that you hear about town is. Is that someone. A special someone is supposed to be coming. No one's quite sure who it is, but their <laughs> like preparations have been made in town. Like there is an official or an emissary or a wizard or a king or a prince or a general or a, a colonel. Like there some folks in town have been making preparations and like hanging out Verasi banners and tidying up the place. And uh, no one's quite certain what's going on. And no one also wants to go and bug them because you don't, it's just better to stay away. Oh, I think um, we just killed like the son of a general or something. <laughs> the, the second thing that you hear in town um, is that there's a wedding later today and everyone's in a tizzy over the wedding, which is unrelated to the other person coming to town thing. I try uh, to seduce the bride. Which, the bride is getting ready. <laughs> She's not out in the farmer's market. I mean... I climb in the window to the bridal chamber. <laughs> no, no I, I leave town. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> okay. God, your character is so much cooler than John Winters ever. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the party gets I was back a pirate king. Once. Pirate King Moon. Okay. We're going to pass two days waiting for the bear to wake up. <clears throat> we totally now, killed like an important person <laughs> in this world. <laughs> he's a nobody. Yeah, maybe he's like staying with us for protection along the way. <laughs> I'm rolling a 1d20 plus 11 for my grub skill. I want to see how good of meals I made for everyone. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> you burnt the cream. <laughs> I am not a cook. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, so when I was making meals for everyone, I burned the butter, and then I proceeded to just burn everything to a crisp so that nothing could harm us. Beautiful. So, if anything, you guys are welcome. Cook a sausage True. for 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking charcoal. <laughs> I, I, I to bite done. the sausage, and it, it, it crumbles in my mouth, and sausages aren't meant to crumble. <laughs> just as I like it. <laughs> Crumbling into ash. <laughs> At least it's got a good cross there, Jerry. <laughs> the potatoes are like hockey pucks. They're like, yeah. so they're like why does pucks. my sausage never come out well? Well, maybe it's because you're cooking it for fucking 35 minutes, huh? <laughs> uh, why is there frog slime on my sausage? What do you do? It's not, I'm not a frog, I'm a bullywug. If there's frog slime on your sausage, Renatus, that's probably your fault. <laughs> There's some laughs shared around by yes, I think the Garb's breaks bad cooking. Slightly. Yeah. I think probably some time, like Reddit's just taking some time away from the group has probably calmed things down a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, Arrakis thinks to himself that he's going to give him another chance and that he was probably embarrassed because his plan failed and I probably 
maybe giving him a hard time wasn't the wisest move. Yeah, Renatus. I'll even say to you while Renatus is gone, I'll say, um, <clears throat> never seen the old man like that. He really got his goat. Uh, I was probably being unfair. I, I don't know, I'm a little bit antsy when it comes to, you know, uniformed guards. I'd see that. Every time we walk into a town, it looks like you sh- you're going to shit your pants. Yeah, well, you know. With, what uh, did you take? Just a book. Must have been some kind of book. It was something. Well, we all have our pasts. I'll stop asking you about it. Thanks uh, for letting me know that. I was really worried that it was, I don't know, a, a crown? <laughs> what use would I have for a crown? What use do you have for a book? I don't see you reading out here. Yeah, yeah. It's not that kind of book, but, you know. I don't expect you to understand, no offense. No, I don't understand magic. Still, uh, you're well spoken for a bullywook. I give a smile. Maybe you know more about magic than you let on. He'll kind of hoist his uh, glaive. This is all I know. It's all oh. I was taught. You can use it at least. Wizard always needs a competent fighter. Fighter always needs a wizard to do his his readings. You know, despite my first impressions of you, uh, Garp, you seem to be the most level-headed of the three of you. And uh, whilst I might not trust you on first impressions, I think you're probably the one that I can rely on the most. So, uh, you know, keep that head straight. Kind of shake his head. I don't know what happened to the old man. You know, Arrakis, as you're looking at this Bullywug, he's hot. You can't help but realize he's so hot. <laughs> he's so smooth. I already he's realized so... this, I know. Okay. It's a good looking frog right there. I had never seen a frog like that before. When he eats as well, something interesting is that Arrakis, or sorry, not Arrakis, um, Garp has immaculate etiquette. Um, mm. He always has like something to clean his paws um he doesn't eat with a fork but that's because nobody has a fork here um wait what's a maintenance kit koibu that's for your equipment like your your weapons oh yeah so yeah you'll notice that he eats very um you can tell that he's been to dinner parties take that how you want interesting right yeah okay well Oh, yeah, we have a bit of a conv- we have a bit of a conversation. It's mostly <clears throat> amenable. Not, we can move on. Growl, you're at negative hit points. Yep. All right, and there's no healer in the party. No one with a healing proficiency. No one with um, healing magic. Well, you do, but you're unconscious. Yeah. Um, so we have a bit of a problem here. <laughs> it's dangerous to leave characters. I'm quoting from the book. At negative hit points for long. Each day that a character begins with negative hit points, roll a 1d10 and compare it with the absolute value of the character's hit points. In other words, take into account only the numerical value of the hit points, ignoring the negative sign. If the die roll is less than this numerical score, the character loses an additional 1d4 hit points. As in, like, you're you're not healing, you're probably getting, like, a bacterial infection mm-hmm. and you're dying. Um, the do-do-do-do... Otherwise, you gain one HP. So roll me a D10 and do not roll a one. Do not roll a one on a D10. Please don't roll a one because then it gets roll a one. I'm not gonna roll a one. I'm just not. Nice. Nice. All right. Nice. <coughs> Does he have to do that both days or just one day? Um, he has to do it both days, but the next day it's a one. You can't roll less than a one on a D10. So after two days, he will rest. I want to have a conversation before he gets back up with um, Ren. With me Ren. there or not? Yeah, probably when Arrakis like, goes to like, go to the yeah. bathroom or something sure. like that. Well, I'm probably studying spells the next morning. Yeah. So while you're studying spells, we'll wander off and have a chat. Ren, what the fuck got into you? Why are you quibbling with the court wizard? Ren will sigh deeply and look at your... Describe your frog eyes. 
Alluring. Um, Majestic. Right now Beckoning. they're green and like harsh. Like you know how like uh, like a snake can kind of look. Mm. Okay. Kind of like that. I will look deeply at you. Um, and while we're talking, <clears throat> I'm kind of like aloof a little bit, and I'm preparing mm -hmm. my um, my tea kit. I'm getting ready to make yeah. tea. Um. And like you asked me this question, and I assume like when I don't answer for a while, yeah, yeah, what do you say? he'll get like he'll get like mad. Um, I'm supposed to be the one with the short temper, not you. You're supposed to be here to teach me. I'll stop then, and I'll turn to look at him, and I'll say, "You are brash, and somewhat offensive, and somewhat headstrong." And sometimes those are the qualities that are required to deal with a dog that's nipping at your heels. Arrakis stepped over a line, and he needed to know that he did. And that's why I pointed out that he was being childish. Arrakis is a <clears throat> psychotic, paranoid wizard who stole a book... He's not someone that you need to go and grovel in the dirt with. He's not worth your time. Grovel? <laughs> He's so paranoid about there being a note on that that scout. I pretended to pocket a note. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> he went crazy. He's been looking at me Garble. sideways. <laughs> Crack a smile there. Um, I, I, I'll say to him, in truth, he did get to me. Um, I'll kind of turn and look at the bear and I'll walk over and I'm kind of like I, this is as I'm preparing tea and I'm letting like the smell of my herbal tea go up the bear's nostrils as it breathes like as I like here's a little little smell for you buddy um, I put my hand on the bear and I say it was my fault it was my plan that he was hurt um, I guess that just got to me I'd imagine it, if it was you that had been hurt. Well, I don't know. I just don't so want to think a, about it. It was a pride thing? You're Not upset? Not pride. Shame? Care. Shame that I would put someone vulnerable and in my care in such danger. You're not the man that you used to be. You're not going to be able to be in the battle like you once were. You're going to have to use us to enact your plans. You still have your mind, but you definitely don't have your body. You didn't do anything wrong. Sometimes people just get unlucky. Fucking true. Uh, on heels, uh... I'll put a hand on your shoulder. Kind of give I'll, you a few pats and, like, start to walk away as you say I'll, something. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of... For a moment, I'll hold his hand and I'll say, I hope our luck changes. I nod. We've been unlucky for the past few years. I'll tell you that. Um, and then I will finish making tea. And I will prepare tea for Arrakis for when he comes back. Um, it will be a chai tea. Um, and I will tell him that where I'm from, chai tea is used um, to calm the mind of you know, anxieties and worries. You made this for me? I did. Um, I'll look around and I'll kind of indicate the forest. We're in a beautiful place with nature. We should take a moment to enjoy it, even if the situation is unfortunate. We can agree on something. Thank you. You'll... Uh, I would like uh... you to make a constitution check with my poisoner <laughs> kit. No, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> You'll hear Garb from uh, a tree nearby. Look, look, I'm a tree frog. <laughs> <laughs> Growl um, wakes up. Nice, okay. Ah, I think he's awake. Uh, careful. Welcome back, bear. Caref I hope careful, you're hungry. Don't, uh, don't pull your stitches. Mm -hmm. He's looking at you guys, I, like, confused. Like, what the fuck happened? I immediately feed Garp. Like, put a big old pile of 
uh, cooked food that we had saved for him in front of him. Wait, I think as he's eating, I'll say, isn't he supposed to eat the orc? I no. jump out of the tree and I do a backflip. <clears throat> I'll I'll Lennon. turn to landing it perfectly, Koibu. Jesus, dude! Another yeah. nineteen looked awesome. I don't Lennon. think we need to eat the corpse. We just need to hide it. I think if enough time passes, it'll be difficult enough to cast the spells that'll allow them to discover what happened here. The wounded horse had very clearly been attacked by a bear, so as long as we can get out of here without suspicion of us having a bear, we'll be fine. I would. And how say about if the bear could bite? the throat of the uh, uh, orc. That would be good. It would at least hide the obvious cause of death. Precisely, well, Arrakis. You're, not you're, also forgetting, you <laughs> you're also forgetting uh. that this guy's got four shovels and I'll like pick up one of the bear paws and like wave it. <laughs> I think that... Uh, you are, <laughs> I think that um, Grau should just bite the obvious spots where you attacked him at. Yeah. And it'll just look like a bear dragged him in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, Let him eat for now, though. I know, yeah. Yeah, Grau's just gonna eat his food. Yeah. Deception. It's the most important part of warfare. <sighs> All right. Um, Grau's Grau gonna finish his food and like sit around and like look at the floor and look around. And just... You go to finish your food and you realize they brought food for three people for three days and they didn't bring any food for Grau. You have leftovers. <laughs> like you have scraps of you bone. Have scraps. Oh, Rouch. shoot. Parts that I burnt too badly. But we would have had a little bit of food because the, the orc had rations. So there'd be at least a day's worth of rations for him, right? You have stale orc rations. Well, I would have eaten that and we would have left some fresh meat and cream for him. You would have... First off, you didn't pay meat prices, okay? You paid peasant prices for that food. <laughs> um, but you Even you with the dancing the ferret, bad... Okay. You ate the bad orc food? You're not leaving that for the bear who can't tell the difference between good food and bad? No, that's just that's what you do. You always you eat the um you, you eat the food that goes off the person. soonest. Right? Okay. Yeah, so and if the rations, rations were going left. off sooner, you eat them. No, the I mean the rations are just bad because they're orc rations. It's like dried snake, you know? It's Ooh. Ooh. Rena it's Renatus' favorite. Festive. It's actually a delicacy from where he's from. <laughs> wow. Red wow. snake. A lot of orcs around there. Mm. Okay. Well, then, um, um, sorry, I just, will just, talk. Just, yeah. just checking really quick, Neil. It's been a day, so I can rearrange my spells, right? Yes. I'll talk to Grau while he, after he eats. Grau, I need you to uh, bite the orc here, and you can eat that, and I'll point to the stab in the neck back here. Uh, Grau's going to, like, put his head like this. He's going to look at you, and he's going to go... Shake his head and keep eating his snake rations. Okay, Grau, I will feed you 10 meat pies if you do this for me. I can't give it to you now, but to the next village we go to. I just need you to bite here and here. It's run. Can you... I'll give you 20 meat pies. Garp. Grau, can you use your claws at least? Maybe crush his head and slash his neck? That's fine. <clears throat> He's going to shake stomp, his head. Stomp gonna, once for yes, stomp twice for no. I'll get mad. He's going to roll you his eyes. Stupid and, fucking bear. He's going to go into human form. Last time I did what you guys told me, I got kicked in the face, I got stabbed with a spear, and I almost died. I'm not doing anything for you. You guys can handle it on your own. I'm going to kick you in the face right now if you don't. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, will, I will tell Garp, you need to go for a walk. Grau? Fuck you, and he walks away. I totally understand. It's my <laughs> fault. I'm sorry. I th didn't think that my plan would put you in that much danger. And I will uh, I will actually kneel down in front of him. And I'll say... I don't know how I can make you trust me or fix this, but... Until you're ready, you don't have to do anything we tell you. I came with you guys because Autumn trusts you, and Autumn said she, I, it's good if I go with you. Um, but the thing you made me do, the, what happened to me, Autumn would never do that to me. 
Um, I'm sorry. It's my fault. I. It was my plan, and it's my responsibility. If you want to go, if you feel safer on your own, I'll understand. But if you want to stick with us until we get back to autumn, I'll try to protect you. I won't make you do anything dangerous anymore. Humans sometimes see bears and dogs and horses and others as, you know, they, they do everything they say and they just lead them around and it, they, it's, it's just not their decision to do anything. So I'm not like that. I'm not a pet. So I don't just no. do what you tell me. Yeah, you understand? I understand. Okay. Explain why I'll, you want I'll... me to bite the, the orc. Okay. Um, we... When people go missing in human and people society, um, like that orc that we killed, when people look for them, they try to understand what happened. You know the way like wolves and bears, they have different bites? Well, humans will look at the dead and see the bite marks and say, oh, a wolf did this, a bear did this. Mm -hmm. A bite mark is different from a dagger mark. And I'll hold up my dagger and I'll like show like on the back of the orc's head that like I where I stabbed him. And I'll say a human will know that a dagger did this. And they if they know a dagger did this, they know to look for people. But if we make it look like a bear did it, they will look for a bear. But um, I am a bear. So they will look for me instead of you? Well, if you're in human form, they won't look for you. But yes, if you're in bear form, they might look for you. Okay. So That's I guess as long as they don't know that I'm bear, it's okay. They sure. think it's just some one, one of my friends from the forest, yeah? Mm -hmm. So they will go out and, and hunt and kill one of my friends, maybe? Possibly. Um, it's not nice. It's not. <laughs> That's why it's your choice if you want to do it or not. You think it Autumn make... will be in danger if I don't do it? You have to tell me truth. You can't do the thing as humans do where they say something and then it's something completely different. I will say I don't know, but I am just being careful. This is like walking quietly in the night when you think there's hunters. We hide our tracks. <sighs> Rago's goes in a bear form. And he's gonna fucking maul the orc and eat some of the yummy delicious food off of him. He's gonna stuff his fucking mm. face with yummy orc cheeks and some of the some of the arms and some of the and he's gonna Get really nice and full. And, uh, now, slightly fermented it's a well. known thing that goblin is disgusting. Like, mm -hmm. goblin tastes like shit. If, even if you, like, get your weapons covered in goblin blood, like, goblin blood stinks. But orc blood, orc flesh, that's an unknown at this moment in time. Tell me, are orcs delicious to bears? There's only one way to find out, isn't there? Roll the grub check. How good is that fucking orc? What do you want me to roll? Uh, I want grub? you to come up with whatever determine you want. You want to roll a grub skill? You can also. I feel like you can also choose. Yeah. Well, I feel like here's the thing, right? This is like a lean fucking warrior. I'm not really that concerned mm -hmm. with what race he is. There's just not a lot of fat on this guy, right? Wait, are orcs fatty or are they like lean and muscular? This one's muscular. lean for sure. Yeah. And do I they just have feel like, like a there's gamey flavor, or are they like you know? I don't know. That's what I'm asking Growl. Mm. Yeah. Asking him um, to, to spout lore. I, I think there's definitely things that taste better. Um, uh, but bears fucking eat everything. He doesn't really care. He is, All right. It's nice. Meat it's definitely your, no, it's no meat pie, but he'll... This was your chance to be like, well, actually, bears <laughs> exclusively, yeah. their favorite food is orc. Yep. <laughs> and orcs are just innately afraid of them. Yeah. He's also mm. not that fresh, right? Um, but it's it's fine. He's a bear. He'll eat it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like three day old meat. It's yeah, fine. It's, bears eat like disgusting shit all the time. It's fine. Yeah. All right. Um, well, um, where was party... Arrakis for this conversation? Probably out pooping. Were you observing? <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. Nick? Sorry, say that again. Where was Arrakis for this conversation? Um, I think just <clears throat> minding his own business, letting you guys sort out your issues between each other. Okay. Um, I'm going to find Garp later if I can. Uh, I'm going to have a... Do I find him? Does he want to be found? Yeah. Uh, Garp will see you coming and yell to you, why can't people just listen when I tell them to do something? It would be so much easier. Um, I know, Garp. It would be so much easier if people just listened. But if you're to be the leader when I'm gone, you need to understand that it's not just the plan that matters. Grau is a bear. And he <laughs> is a tool. But he's also a person. He has feelings. He has trust. He has emotions. How would you feel if you had just been woken up on a forest floor after executing a plan that someone else had done and then being told, hey, go do more things, right? You didn't even ask him if he was okay. You didn't even check up on him. In that way, you failed uh, him as a leader. Garp will say, um, he, and you know who he's talking about, always commanded respect through fear, and it worked for him. It's all I've seen. Why can't it work for me? If you just let me have my way with the bear, it would. I will sigh deeply. This is a conversation we've had. I don't know how to make you see. But when you left, I treated him like I cared for him. And he did what I asked. You catch more flies with honey. And those who rule with fear die screaming. Garp will kind of walk off. Um, these second set of two days, Neil, so the, the second day that Garp was, the growl was downed, and then this <clears> next day now, I'll um, replace two of my spells with read magic, my two non-bonus mm -hmm. spells, and I want to, when I've got some time on my own, cast read magic and look through the spells in my stolen spell book. Yeah, well, I was going to say that we're about at end of session, um, and that I was going to try and get us to end on the return back to autumn, um, because we are out of time. We've got a long way to go yet, though, right? I loved this session, dude. This was well, that's awesome. three days, and there were no encounters on the way out here. There's okay. not going to be any encounters on the way back. You're yeah. going through civilization. <laughs> okay. Um, and Hopium. also, I think... Yeah, we, we should probably have a longer conversation about your spells and spell books. Yeah, uh, yeah, we fine. don't have time for that now. I'm just I'm making the point that up. I actively will be using some right. read magic spells when I feel safe to go through it. Perfect. Um, and in that travel time, Garp can memorize some Cure Light Wounds, and we'll sort it all out, but you're going to get back to Autumn's safe and sound. Okay. And we're going to end our session here. Great. Cool. Um, we're going to go live after this to the after show. Um, if you want to join us and hear about our characters slash the questions that other patrons have asked, please go to patreon.com slash save or die and join at the Goblin tier. It helps us out produce this. We are paying a lot of people now. We have a new producer. Um, his name is Pierre, and we're super happy to have him. So he's done a good job this episode, and we will be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. EST. We are also happy episode. to take any feedback about the production on today's episode. Um, it was, this was the first time working, and uh, we're definitely um, looking to iron out some things and make it as good as possible now that we have this available. So if you have any ideas, thoughts, or feedback, let us know. Yes. I'll make a feedback channel inside of the Save or Die patron Discord. Um, so if you're a patron and you want to throw out some feedback for Pierre to like read himself, um, you 
you'll have a channel to put it there. So cool. There's also the subreddit, Neil subreddit, and there's usually a thread up there. I just posted it in the YouTube chat. You can go check that out. Um, and uh, that's a good place to drop feedback if you're not a Discord user. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. See you in the after show, guys. Bye-bye.